It's the Bennington Show, Wednesday, November 8, 2017. I'm Ron Bennington. This is Gail Bennington. Yo. And I'm Ron Bennington. Hmm. The uh, winter has arrived. I think that the Game of Thrones people. Winter knows, is here. But know exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it's a little chilly out there today. Um, I miss global warming. That was my favorite part of the year that was so fun this summer oh god we had a long beautiful nine months of summer <laughs> and now it's gone um let's start this off with brian in north carolina hey brian hey what's going on yeah you know calling with you know sad sad news about roy holiday uh, yeah the roy holiday thing was just uh heartbreaking it's, um, um it particularly it's it's one of those things and you'll You'll be able to kind of relate to this, you know. As Philly fans, we definitely have that that little bit of a inferiority complex. And when a guy as talented as him not only decides he's going to come play for your team, you know, actually make that decision, not be traded, but say, you know what, I want to go pitch in Philly, and then for him to come in and and do what he did, be as unbelievable as he was, but also be a good good guy and. Um, yeah, it just, it's really sad. I, I look at that. He, he was eight days younger than me, and it's just a weird feeling to think that somebody that you idolize could be so young and and now gone. And, you know, I, I the one time in my life I've been able to take my, uh, my dad to a baseball game was Father's Day 2010, uh, and he was pitching up at Citizens Bank Park. And he didn't have his best stuff, and the Phillies wound up losing. But even with that being the case, you could just feel like, you were seeing you were seeing the best and that's uh that's a rare rare feeling and um yeah it's just it's it's very sad and uh it, you know i think we get caught up so much in in how much these guys get paid and all that bullshit and yeah they get paid too much but at the end of the day they do provide you with something that it, it's it's hard to put into words but it's uh it's just a sad day all right thanks for calling us uh Roy, and as they called them in Toronto, Doc Holliday uh, died in a small plane accident uh, uh, yesterday off the uh, Gulf Coast of St. Petersburg. Just a great and classy pitcher. His uh, his numbers are ridiculous, too. I mean, one of the greatest winning percentages that I've ever seen in my lifetime. And... Um, you never you never heard a bad thing about the guy. But I was in a, a conversation with a buddy of mine yesterday. Why is it it's always baseball players flying their own small planes and dying? You never hear of any yeah. other sport where they want to fly around in these small planes, but baseball players seem to want to do it. It's really strange. I don't like uh it seems like it's such a reoccurring thing. Those uh, and it's weird too, not just that, but then uh, I feel like in my lifetime that's happened a couple times off of the Gulf Coast right there in St. Peter's. Like I remember one yeah. time the same same style plane when I was a kid and I remember it going down. It was a very unexpected thing and it's just heartbreaking news, man. It's yeah. just really sad. Yeah, when you, when a guy can retire in his 30s, you know, and I'll be like, you're in your 30s and you're like, well, I really left a hell of a legacy. My, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Now I could take the next 40 some years and just party and relax. Uh, it just always seems like some of those ball players, more than any other sport, just kind of have it made in their retirement because they're not all busted up and it's not Is brain that like injury. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's so many other. Uh, sports that you just leave your body behind once you retire. And you get to retire very, very young with a ridiculous amount of money if you happen to be a star pitcher. But uh, this uh, rocks the uh, city of Toronto because they just love that dude, too. Long before he came to Philly, he pitched in uh, Toronto for a, a lot of years. Um. Well, Vito, did you ever get this chance to see him play? Yeah, because uh, when he was a Philly, uh, the Mets, he was in town basically every month, and that rotation he was on was yeah, terrifying. Was crazy. Yeah, him, there was no... Him, Cliff Lee, and Cole Hamels, like it was... Yeah. Yeah, man, that was... <laughs> that was... Uh, that was a hell of a pitching staff. 
And you know, it goes to show you, too, like, you see that when people always talk about building teams, you can't keep that kind of stuff together very long, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I The whole thing about flying those small planes, I worked at a place where the guy who was, like, the accountant, I mean, he wasn't, like, wealthy. Mm-hmm. He had his plane, and he used to fly around, and he would fly it. Like, oh, the weekends, he's like, dude, you got to come up with me. And I'm like, nah, I don't want to fucking go up with you. I mean, I don't have that kind of respect for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> like a yeah. pilot, I'd like to put up there, like, with a uh, with a surgeon. You know what I mean? Like, I, w- I want to think of a pilot as somebody right. who's unbelievable good at it. And I saw this guy. I mean, he used to eat lunch at his desk, which nothing grosses me out more. <laughs> nothing and when i see people come back into this fucking building with bags i see a lot of, like because we come in at 12 right and i'll just see these nbc people taking a bag and i i just think of it as filthy it's almost looks to me like if they were carrying around a light bag of shit with them <laughs> why do you want to eat at your fucking keyboard and spread disease also it just seems gross because whenever i think of like just like dribbling soup on your papers or something it's just like it's kind of gross. Filthy way to live. It's a <laughs> fucking filthy way to live. Um, eight four four Rock God. Eight four four Rock God. Cam, Cam, you're on the Bennington show. Yeah, hey, Rod. Just calling from the with the Toronto perspective. Uh, a lot of times when a player wants away from your team, everybody gets pissed at him. But with this guy, the whole city was cheering for him in Philly. I mean, it was just he was such a good guy, and he was so wasted in Toronto that it was, uh, you know, he just. Nobody resented him at all for wanting to go to a better team. I've had that experience with certain guys, too, like when they go on and you just stay a fan and you want to see them, you know, uh, do well. It's always, um, there's just some guys that seem like they know how to do this without being a dick. (laughs) And other guys, they can't help it. Like, it all seems so stressful to them. But some guys just seem like, and once again... Uh, I'm going to end up quoting Bachman Turn or Overdrive, but some people just know how to be taking care of business. <laughs> I'm talking about every day. And then they taking care of business in every way. Take good care <laughs> of my business. 844-ROCK-GOD. 844-ROCK-GOD. Uh, Vito, uh, did you happen to watch the 30 for 30 last night? I did watch the Ric Flair 30 for 30. And? Uh, I liked it. But I think they glossed over some really important things in the documentary. They glossed over? Like, for example, they go into like him, uh, they're like, oh, he was really down on himself, and he didn't have a lot of confidence at this point. And I feel like a really important part in Rick's career to look at is like when in WCW they were trying to make him like shave his head, and Eric Bischoff was treating him like he was really low on the card. Yeah. And I felt like that was a really important thing. You should have shown how... Well, none of that... Well, I'm going to give you two things. Number one... I don't believe a single word of what was said. Nothing. <laughs> There's no reason. I don't believe he was in a coma. I don't believe right. any of that stuff. <laughs> I just, there's no reason to ever believe it. <laughs> but it seemed like this was uh, less of a 30 for 30 and more of a wrestling promo, in my opinion. Yeah. But the, the ending of it, Niagara Falls. Yeah, but you're going to say that about any human being. You know yeah. what I mean? You live long enough, you've seen some fucking rough stuff. But you feel like they didn't pull the curtain back enough. I don't think that there is a a back behind the curtain. Right. I mean, he admitted he lived this fucking gimmick, right? Right. So why would I believe anything? Mm-hmm. Why would I believe the amount of alcohol that he claimed he drank or the 10,000 women? There's no reason. All that stuff is Ric Flair talk. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was shocked that Triple Triple H was a little more honest than I thought uh, he would be. Triple H, uh, <laughs> what happened to him? <laughs> when he's <just> grumpy. Hey. <laughs> Flair. <laughs> but just like saying, like I, uh, yeah, I, I gave him a heads up that his, I was going to give his son a drug test, and him saying I don't believe anything Ric Flair says. He he lies a lot. Like I was just surprised that R- Triple H said some of the things he said in the documentary. I, I, again, why would any of it be real? Nothing. Nothing. It was as real as his retirement. <laughs> Nothing. 
Did you like when uh, Ric Flair was going through a very tough thing with his family and then Triple H is like, I call him up and I'd be like, shut the hell up. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, fired. <laughs> so stupid. The the stuff that was, I mean, he knew, he knew where he peaked. He knew where it mattered. And that shit was uh, the 80s. He was fucking hilarious. Yeah. He was hilarious. But to know that he was 40 in fucking 1989, <laughs> and then how long it took for him to finally step out of the ring. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of the problems that um, Vince even had to, with him, that by the time he came over, he was, you know, he would have been retired from any other real sport. <laughs> right. <laughs> And that was just his first run in the WWF. His second run, he was just really. Thanks for saying F. I really appreciate that. I know a lot I of you guys say E. I struggle with it, but I still want to default back to F. No, I, I just think I, I say WWF when it's the right year. I say WWE when it's that year. Well, you're perfect just, at everything. <laughs> you just you you should be a diplomat. Look, Chris put himself in the other room, but now he keeps trying to put the mic I on me so people can hear him laugh. But, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you who does that because Vito never does. No, Vito never goes. Oh, I want everybody to hear me laugh right now. Yeah, you know why you do you do everything right. I know, and sometimes I wish he would, because sometimes I say something stupid, and you and Chris are just looking at me, and I see Vito laughing, and then I go like this, Where's the button? <laughs> and then he shakes me off, like, nope. <laughs> Where, I'm, I'm sorry, Chris, the people in this room are talking. Uh, turn that fucking button off. Nobody wants to hear you smile. <laughs> he's he's doing a lot of work on the Thanksgiving show, according to him. He's I doing... Am. A lot of good for a lot of people. Yeah. I'm calling this Stanley's Folly next Tuesday <laughs> night. Um, here's another story that just is almost fucking wrestling. Jim Ursay, the uh, alcoholic drug addict who was given the Colts by his uh, uh, alcoholic dad. Mm -hmm. uh, he says that Andrew Luck's injury is inside his head. Like, he is questioning. The fact whether Andrew Luck, and I'm never a Colts fan, I'm not a fucking Andrew Luck fan, but this has been a tough, tough kid from Jump Street. Nobody gets sacked more than this guy. <laughs> He's got all the talent in the world, and they they put a screen door as his line. <laughs> a fucking screen door. <laughs> There's two fucking tight ends, each holding a screen, each side of a screen door, and then letting the other team run through it. And for this fucking pill head, yeah, pill head, to say, oh, I, I think it's all in his head. That's so shitty. It's, it's the fucking <laughs> shittiest thing I've ever heard of in my life. It's so awful. He was telling that to Tony Dungy, former uh, coach of the of the Colts. And Colts. Colts. Oh, my God. What are they? The Colts. <laughs> yeah, what are they doing? Taking young virgins up there and burning them? There are also rumors that uh, Luck may never play again, that he's done. Is that his I would be done as a, as a cult. <laughs> I'm done with the he's Colts. He's a cult. Yeah. Um, my uh, aunt hired a man to come here and deprogram me, so I'm no longer going to be the quarterback of the Colts. <laughs> I haven't seen my Scientology show this week either. Busy. Too busy to keep up with the anti-Scientology so, show. You're so busy. <laughs> yeah. This week's guest is going to be Kevin James, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. Are they going to pretend they're married? I don't think they're pretending. I think they're actually married, and she was jealous of the last uh, one. That's going to be the twist of this episode. Um, there is a online petition for Kevin James to take over as House of Cards. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. Why? As a joke? Yes, as a funny <laughs> joke. <laughs> Just people are so fucking nuts online now that they somehow got thousands of people to sign a thing that we want Kevin James to be the new president of the House of Cards. Holy shit. That's I'm funny. sure Reddit is somehow involved. Her, or 4chan. Probably Be chance. Yeah, because they're so organized. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, this would have just been a joke at work and 10 guys would have done it. Yeah. <laughs> but if you belong to the... And 4chan is different than Reddit. It's a, it's a totally different thing than Reddit. Everyone is anonymous on 4chan. 
But so they, they don't even. Si- I thought they were on Reddit though. People are on Reddit, but for, uh, some people from 4chan go on to Reddit, but if you're just on 4chan... Your hair is so thick and just fucking just L- lively. Lustrous. Yeah, it's just fucking fantastic today. Thank, thank but you. But it, aren't you anonymous on Reddit as well? Well, you have to make an account to post on Reddit, so you have like, an, a, like a, a username. So it's just random thoughts at all? Like you on don't 4chan, know- yeah, everyone's just labeled anonymous and then like a post number and no one- yeah. How do I know if I'm buddies with somebody and I hate the other yeah, one? Yeah, I'm like, how do you know if you're killing? You know what I mean? Like you get I, some real good points. And then I'd be like, I thought anonymous liked me, but now look what he's just wrote. He said that I'm a fucking douche. <laughs> How many people? Yeah. Uh, as of yesterday, it was 35,000 people. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> if I was Netflix, I'm like, let's just do one episode, see what happens. Maybe it'll, <laughs> this thing has fucking legs. Could take off for us. Um, Man, I'm probably cutting into the dish, huh? Oh, um, boy. Was this Kevin James? Kevin James related dish. I had Kevin James. I had Ric Flair, Roy Holiday. This is all the stuff she had planned on doing. Jen's losing one dish after another. She's going hungry over here. God, <laughs> you know, You're like so a food. Funny man. You know, do you have a way to just turn his mic off from here, or yes? <laughs> I'll tell you this. Fuck. That should have been a note that you gave him. And then every time we see him talking, we give him the thumbs up. <laughs> Did you get your phone call yet? Uh, I got the phone call. I'm going to have Jen run a couple of notes into you. Jesus Christ. I just want to keep you updated. Are they good notes or bad notes? Updated. Oh, they're good notes. Uh, Vito, after the show today, you're on your way to see your hero's show, Conan O'Brien. Yeah. yeah I'm, hey, going up, I'm going up to the Apollo to go see Conan do his live show in New York. I'm fucking so excited for this. I've never met a bigger Conan fan. This will be Beattie. my third time seeing him. My first time at the Apollo. Oh, you've never been to the Apollo? I've never, I've never been to the Apollo before. I just realized oh, that. Oh God, now. that's fantastic! No, I made you realize it. You didn't. <laughs> um, that's uh, you're going to have a, a great time, and you're writing a column on this, huh? Yes, this will be on the iBang as early as tomorrow. <laughs> nice. It's called Sweetie Boy Goes to See Aww. His Lovey Dovey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please name it that. I have my headline now. Um, I have a friend who is a writer on that show, Laurie Kilmartin, and um, I don't know whether we should bother her with you, but she's fantastic. <laughs> uh, last night, all the writers, uh, f- as part of New York Comedy Fest, Right, I think it's the Ace Hotel that's the hub right now, and they all got together and did um, stand up. I thought it was going to be a panel show. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so the writers went up and did stand up, and it was like saying Conan, but without all the great time. <laughs> <laughs> Same jokes, none of the timing. It's at the public hotel. Oddly, oh, the public hotel. Thanks. That's, a, that's the new trendy place. Um. Oddly enough, it was hosted, I don't know why, by Joe List. Really? <laughs> yes. I guess because he's been on Conan before. Oh, okay. That meant, and the tables have turned. Now he's yes, the host. Yes, now he's the host. <laughs> People are going crazy. One lady actually screamed and ran down the aisle. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> are we in the upside down? <laughs> oh, man. People love to bring that up. I know. It's like we live in the upside down. <laughs> I haven't seen a minute of that yet. <laughs> don't don't bother with it. Don't waste yeah, nine hours. That's not true. There's like one bad episode and like a couple things. No, one like. episode. There's a lot of good things about it. I can, enjoyed it. You could even skip that episode. It wouldn't affect you in any way whatsoever. Good. I'm going to because I love be, to skip an episode. You might just go. Why is Eleven dressed like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, she dresses odd, huh? That sounds like a show I want to see. It's not. <laughs> Eliza, don't tell me what I, I do and don't want to see. Now he's going to dig in. If I respected gonna... you, you'd be in this room. You know what? You're staying in that room for quite some time. <laughs> really? Quite some time. Do you yeah. want me to shut him up, too? No, what I'd like is if he has something to say, he sends it on these giant notes that he has. <laughs> I'm running out of paper over here. <laughs> he's t- Look at his handwriting. It's not very good. I, I, my hand writes like a This took me a minute to figure out what this word here meant. I mean, like that word. I was very confused. He's an idiot. 
<laughs> You're a maniac, dude. <laughs> and fucking Stanley's Folly on Tuesday. <laughs> don't, don't call it that. <laughs> You're going to be like fucking Sissy Spacek in the blood, pig's blood. <laughs> it's just going to be falling all over you. Uh, you know, I don't want to fucking say anything about Stephen King because I've never read one of his books. But why would you take a thing like that, right? With all the action that that had. And you just call it Carrie? You couldn't come up with a good name? You just call it Carrie? Yeah, why not? That's it? Bloody night. <laughs> Bloody Night would have been fantastic. <laughs> crazy Some prom. Of this is a crazy prom. <laughs> Worst prom ever. You should call it Dirty Pillows. But seriously, you're not dirty even pillows. fucking trying. You just name it that. <laughs> Period problems. <laughs> Everyone just fucking with ape shit on her for having her period. I can it's not that weird. <laughs> no. Half the fucking people on the planet do it. And they were just losing their shit. <laughs> Carrie. I don't know what to call it. What's her name again? Carrie? All right. That's just it. Just send it out. Some people are bad at titles. <laughs> you don't want to be that fucking bad. Speaking of which, he named another fucking of his books. And I only know this because it's a movie. Firestarter. <laughs> It's a cool movie, though. That one at least makes sense. <laughs> That's too on the nose, dude. That's as on the nose as a Chris Stanley fucking joke. <laughs> Did he also write Cujo? Also, just the name of the dog? Yes. <laughs> right. And then there's It. <laughs> that fucking... Not even Crazy Clown. <laughs> clown should be in the title somewhere. No kidding. Pennywise the Clown. Just call it that. <laughs> Pennywise would have been fine if he's just naming yeah, people <laughs> after their names. Yeah, like, it's, is Pennywise ever called it? He isn't, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure, at least from the movie and from the, like, the made-for-TV movie, the, the between those two, I'm pretty sure he just says his name, like, the first time he shows up. I'm Pennywise the Clown. Like, doesn't he just say it? Yeah, in the sewer. I'm it. <laughs> He should have been called fucking Scary Clown in the Sewer. I'm it. <laughs> I guess it knows what it wants. You know what would have been a better name for it? Shh, it. That would have been it. <laughs> Stephen King also wrote Misery, which is fucking pretty. Did he ever say, did he ever say I'm in Misery right now? No. You don't have to say the <laughs> Wait, title. Unless he's like getting his knees knocked together. I am in Misery. <laughs> is that what she did? Knocked his knees to? Uh, I don't the know. Plank, she broke his fucking feet. The plank between ankles. the ankles, and then she fucking like slashed oh. it, right? She hobbled the poor bastard. Hobbled? That's hobbling someone, I believe. How did they do that in stage play? What do you mean in stage play? They, it was on. It was a stage play like a year ago. Laurie Metcalf was in it. Yeah, but. They what do you mean? Do you the think the they ho really day. hobbled them? No, but I mean, like, there's ways you could do trick photography in cinema. Yeah, there's tricks to in theater too. You don't. Where do you think magic came from? Theater. <laughs> no, I, I know that they're not actually breaking his legs. I'm just saying, like, I'm wondering how they went about. Chris, you did this to me. You moved this fucking knucklehead child into this room. You hobbled him. <laughs> Here's what they did. Let's just pretend I hobbled his feet, okay? I mean, we don't have, we don't have the trick photography. I, a guy who went, first of all, he went to film school, and he is now referring it as trick photography. <laughs> then he also doesn't say how how would they do this on uh, uh, live or in a theater. He just said in a stage play. <laughs> <laughs> Not a teleplay, like they do on television. <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> um, we had the big election last night in, uh, in New York City. Bo Deedle, the bad lieutenant, ran. And a city of 8 million people, he got 10,000 votes. Oh. Chris, one of those votes was Leslie. <laughs> Dito's mom Shit, voted Leslie. for Bo Dito. <laughs> the text I got in the morning yesterday was, 
I just voted for Bo Deedle. <laughs> like early in the morning. I had just like left for work. And it was two texts that said, just voted for Bo Deedle. She was really excited about it. Been looking forward to this for a while. I don't know why. Bo Deedle. I, n- I never understand why Italians love the mafia and love right wing cops. They do. They love both. They really and do. All those guys in the mafia, when you would read this story, they. They voted for Giuliani, the prosecutor of the mafia. I like him. He's tough on crime. And you're like, dude, you guys are fucking criminals. <laughs> you shouldn't want somebody who's tough on crime. It's a different crime than our crime, right? No, they know. <laughs> he got me. He got my brother. He's good. He's good. <laughs> Old Bo Deedle. Um, Andrew, what's up, buddy? Hey, guys. Uh, in the movie Misery, uh, the character that James Conn played, the fictional book that he wrote, the main character's name was Misery. Chris, your fucking other room helping just cost us a prize. <laughs> Shit! Yeah! Congratulations! You get Chris's paycheck this week. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Oh, Christopher, Christopher. Holly wrote to us, I love when Chris chokes on his spit when he laughs. He does do that. Yeah. He can't make it through a laugh. Without one of his lungs fucking deflating. <laughs> this second round I've gotten to with smoking has really fucked me up. I should have never quit in the first place. Round. Because what does that mean? Right, oh, so the, you took from this you shouldn't have quit <laughs> in, the, in the first place. He means, him. <laughs> He thinks that every time that he stops quitting, uh, stops quitting is what he does. He quits and then he stops quitting. I want to stop quitting right now. He thinks that is a new round in the <laughs> fight against himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> did your mom realize how few people voted for Bo Deedle she's one of 10,000 crazies one of, one of 10,000 maniacs living in New York City <laughs> 10,000 maniacs I'm going to text her and ask what she thinks about being one of the mighty 10,000 <laughs> are you taking her with you to Conan or she's not a big fan no, oh, this she- is work for you I forgot yeah, this is a work related scoop is on his way there <laughs> bring my mom to work event. who are the guests I didn't look yet to see who the guests were. I want to be right. surprised. You're not going to be surprised. Why <laughs> should you get... writing an article. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? It starts with, what the fuck, Tom Cruise? <laughs> what the fuck? Holy shit. And then guess what happened? <laughs> I'm going to find out and spoil your surprise. No, don't. No, you're supposed. Gail is right. You're supposed to go in there as a member of the press, not a child. <laughs> she already took my first line of "Holy shit!" and then this happened. Oh God! You know what? We're gonna just take that away. I'm gonna fucking take the ticket, throw it out the window, and whoever lands it lands on writes a better article than you. What was the name of your article again? Sweetie, sweet goes to see his hero. <laughs> lover boy, <laughs> his lover boy, or something. Like that. <laughs> oh my god hey Robbie you're on the Bennington <laughs> show hey Ronnie I just want to congratulate you on the comedy at the stand the hour that you're doing yeah. I was there a couple of weeks ago on Friday and I uh, had a great time and yeah. you even talked about my uh, web show oh yeah 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 this guy has an unbelievable web show um, is it waxed Wax Wednesdays, yes. Wax Wednesdays, where he talks about herb and wax and all the different things to smoke. He does it oh, out nice. of Denver, yeah. And um, we ended up talking, uh, most, he basically co-hosted it when he sat <laughs> with me. I felt that way too, Ronnie. Yeah. Uh, sometime <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have to, next time that you're in New York, you'll have to stop in here and we'll do a uh, cross promotion. I would love to. Love- yeah, let me have some of that coconut water. It looks delicious. Yeah, please do. You know the problem with regular water? It please doesn't have coconut. Let me bring some stuff for you guys, too. This is for Chris Stanley, you know. Chris, did you get the uh, harvest pictures that I sent you from one of our listeners? Yes, I did. They're amazing looking. Yeah. They were just sitting around with, uh, they had just harvested their weed crop. And there was so much there. And I'm like. I remember when Chris used to love weed so much. Now, not as much, Chris. I'm a social smoker. I found that, uh, I just, because the last time I really got into smoking weed 
I fucking just smoked too much weed. I was eating edibles constantly and had a vaporizer, and I was smoking everywhere I went during dinner, shopping. I was smoking in the Models. I was just stoned all the time. There it was, was these little coffee weed fucking candy that he had. Espresso beans. That he was just eating as candy every day. Uh. And then he figured out, oh, for the last five weeks, I've been speedy high every day at work. And when right. I'm going like, Chris, you just... None of your shit is making any sense at all. <laughs> so bad. Then he I feel fucking like put it together. I out here too now. Every day you're high, huh? Pretty much. Um, edible some days. We do dabs other days. Um, when we get together with people, it's flour and blunts and joints. Yeah. Or we're doing uh, medicated meals where we actually infuse everything and have like 10 people out to dinner and we're just kind of... Do you make savory dishes like that? Because I've seen a lot of baked goods that are yeah, infused. Yeah, we, but... we do pizza, we do bacon, we do all sorts of different things. No. Medicaid honey. I Medicaid think I'd rather oil. get high before I ate, not eat a pizza, and then have it kick in an hour later. And then you're like, I now I need another pizza. Yeah. I <laughs> wish oh, Ron, you sleep like a baby, though. It's so nice. Man, I could use something to sleep. I'm not sleeping at all again. <laughs> well, I'm sleeping come daylight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Daylight. I'm like, oh, I can couple, catch a couple hours before work. But I can't tell you how good the Eagles are getting at Madden. <laughs> I mean, we're just, I'm fucking stoppable right now. <laughs> all right, dude, make sure you uh, contact this next time you come into town, all right, man? I definitely will. Thanks, Ronnie. Have a great show. Peace. Peace. Um, this is the only job he does an hour a week. Wax Wednesdays. That's very nice. Yeah, and the rest of the time he's just getting has. <laughs> when your mouth is getting dry, you're pretty high. So you don't like it anymore? I'll smoke it socially, but I'm not going out and buying weed. You mean weed. you smoke somebody else's weed? It, 100, yes, exactly. Yes. Someone passes a joint or a bowl or a Yes, blunt. I understand yes. how it happens, Chris. We know what a doobie is, Chris. <laughs> so I'll smoke other people's doobies, but I'm not going out and buying my own weed. <laughs> No, the, you, your your special lady friend. Yes, she a weed smoker too. Uh, she used to be no more. No more, huh? No more, yeah. Was, was she like an infused pizza? Maybe I think she, yeah, we'd fuck. Because what's the point of this? You don't look. He's saying you sleep so good, you end up eating a fucking thing of pizza. Yeah. Then fucking laying right down and passing out until the next day. No, I would rather smoke something. And, and you're pass having out. weed dreams. Yeah. We dreams are made of these. Lord Sear gave me a pie of infused pizza one time, and I didn't know what to do with it, so I gave it to Disco Dan. <laughs> he ate the fuck out of it. <laughs> he did. <laughs> it was a pie? Yeah, it was a whole pie. What, like an apple pie? No, no, no. A pizza pie. Uh, a weed-infused pizza pie. Right. Well, you never said pizza. I just When I hear somebody <laughs> says like, someone gave him a pie, right. it doesn't, he... <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm thinking, oh. Like if someone said, "What kind of pie do you like?" I'm not going to say pizza. <laughs> pizza, for I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't everybody open a restaurant called Pie and Pie, and you just get pizza yeah. and then a nice big pie after that? That's nice. Everything pie related. I go like this. Could I just have the pie on top of my pie? So I'm eating pizza <laughs> and blueberry at the same time. <laughs> it's meta. Why would that be meta? It's like a pie within a pie. Within. I didn't know it was infused in the pie. I thought it was on top of it. Thought it was a slice of each. Look at that hair right now. I know it's gorgeous. It's swoop. You're a fucking. This is a good one today. You're a fucking beautiful man anyway. Don't don't change it. Yeah, don't like touch don't it. fuck around with it because he's actually so different than it was just five minutes ago. Earlier he had like uh, there's a shine to it. Yeah, too. there is a beautiful shine, but he had like a rolling part, and now it's just much more calm than it was. Let's say 15 minutes ago. I couldn't even do this if I tried. I don't know how this hair becomes this way. He has a real rock and roll look going with that bandana on his wrist and that black, <laughs> that black shirt yeah, look at a little, like, like early aughts emo. Like, it's like <laughs> not even a look that exists. That it though. looks like I you're trying it. to hang around with Big J. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your wrist. What are you doing? It's just a bandana. Sometimes slapping around the head, sometimes putting around the wrist. The, head. the way he says about his own body, it's so funny to me. The head. The he never says my head. Doctor, this is uh, Chris Stanley. The head is killing me right now. 
<laughs> no, the throat is good. The throat is fine. He always says this. It's so peculiar. I've never heard someone seem so distant from their own yeah. body. <laughs> he told me that his girlfriend was sucking the dick. <laughs> It's just between me and you, Ron. Oh, I forgot. We always have this. We call it comparison time. <laughs> the dick. She loves the dick. Uh, um, I don't want to read about Trump. Don't care. Fat estate in 2017. Yes, so uh, the numbers are in, and I'm telling you, it's not what I thought. Not a red state, then. It is a red state, but I guess I thought, I had always thought that it would have been the northeastern spots that have, like, big, heavy set cities. Like, for example, I know Philly is always high up there. City of uh, brotherly love handles, they call it. Uh, Chicago is always up with the, like, the fattest cities. Yeah, but did you, well, you see what country people look like now, right? They're fucking enormous. Yes, and if you look at the list here, yeah, this is a very bottom-heavy U.S. Well, it is, um, and not to be offensive, but they tie in, it in with lack of education. Really? Yeah. And also unpicky women and unpicky men. <laughs> so they're just comfortable with themselves. Chris, have you read this yet? Would you like to guess? Because fucking Vito just put up a a fucking thing that just looks like the SEC. <laughs> He's got all the bluer states there. What would you say? I'm gonna guess Indiana is the fattest state in the because of the amount of corn they have. All that corn, constant high. Yeah, but they 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 fucking ship the corn. Nobody's eating local corn there. Vito, do you already know? No, I don't know. I know for a fact Indiana is not in the top five. Come on. I was going to say one of the A states, whether it's in Arkansas or Alabama. Arkansas uh, is ranked number four. Yeah. Uh, and they're also third from the bottom in reading. <laughs> <laughs> but leading and marrying your own cousin. <laughs> See, some good things. Yeah. New Jersey. No, New Jersey is not top five. Just because of Chris Christie, that's why you did that? <laughs> I was just thinking Italian people in general like to eat a lot, and there's a lot of them out there. I got another guess. Okay. Give me South Carolina. No way. South Carolina is not top five. Fuck. No. And Alabama wasn't either, right? Alabama's not top five. Mississippi? Mighty Mississippi. Mighty Mississippi, number one yeah. fattest state. Also, number one in illiteracy, and I'm not even making that up. So I, I read these things, you know, over the course of my lifetime. They just say a lot of people down there will quit school and then start eating. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else to do. I think also there's a big lead in black women when it comes to Mississippi. There's a lot of yeah. big mamas, as they say. And you know, like they're they're thicker in the lower regions. Yeah. So they know. got that big old ass. Uh, and then right. the milkshake brings all the boys to the yard too. <laughs> so the list goes like this: number five. Do you want to guess anymore? We pretty no, much I'm have it. Bored. Five: Louisiana. Four: Arkansas. Three: Tennessee. Two: West Virginia. Number one: Mississippi. All great college football teams, though. Now, what would be your guess as the lowest ranking in obesity? Lightest state. I'm going to say healthy Vermont. Vermont is not on there, although I do think it's like in the lighter zone. Is it a sure. New England place, though? It, it, there is a uh, number two spot is a New England place. Maine. No. Connecticut. Mm -mm. New Hampshire? <laughs> oh. Little Rhode Island. Mm -mm, no, Rhode so Island. little. And you can't get fat <laughs> they, when you take up too much room. They shouldn't be allowed to just weigh everyone in the state. That should be how they figure they're, it out. They're our lightest weighing state. <laughs> well, give, give me our lightest. Uh, the well, I'll give you the number two spot. It was yeah. Massachusetts. Oh, is number two spot. Mass holes. Well, they are a lot of meth. Number uh, one spot. Yeah. Colorado. Where they have the fucking weed infused uh, pizza. Yes, but they they ski, they hike. They're outdoorsy people. Yeah. they have like they are into a lot of sports. I'm indoorsy. You know, <laughs> I like indoor sports, like watching TV. <laughs> also, I want to wonder, like, is the altitude affect this? 
<laughs> they just maybe seem lighter. You they know what? They, they then they also say like I can't eat. I'm too queasy from this al- altitude. Oh, that makes sense. Fucking passed out for three days with a bloody nose. Number five was Montana, which I was just like, hmm, okay. Four Hawaii, little Hawaiians. No, those men, those yeah. Hawaiian guys. Strange. They're like fucking on their way to being Samoa. And then uh, three is Utah. Give me yeah, two. <laughs> well, I can see. I can see that Utah because the Mormons. Yeah, I guess they're health. They're health nuns. Well, they don't drink, so that keeps right. you from eating a lot of bad food. I mean, just think of that. Every time you're drunk, you're just eating deep fried food. That's foods. always you always eat the worst. It when... fucking tastes so good though, like greasy food. Fantastic. I don't know why it works that way. What if but we like, started our own like craft greasy beers, and it just tastes like chicken wing? Oh yeah, and the beer. I would love so that. So good, chicken wing, a cheese fry. I'm a big fan of when I'm drunk. Like that's oh, not yeah. a sober thing that I want. No, but nobody's going to have a cheese fry when they're sober. But when I'm drunk, a cheese fry is. And then hangover food, like I can't get on with my day without a bacon, egg, and cheese. Oh yeah. It's, that's like the only thing that'll make me better. The grease takes you back to the loveliness from the night before. <laughs> grease, Mrs. Grease. <laughs> I'll do a fried pickle when I'm hungover. Fried pickle. Because it, pickles are re- really good for like hydration. <laughs> so that's why people do picklebacks because like you feel less hungover the right, next day. Right, because the, all the salt yeah. helps you. So fried pickle the morning <laughs> after you've been drinking, it really does wonders. What if you just like, did a hit of salt? Like just salt your water maybe. In the morning, just like drink salt water, like ocean and water. Some people salt their beers. Like yeah. old guys used to salt their beers. I feel like Mexican beers you put uh, salt in, too. I think I remember old dudes sitting at a bar with those little tiny fucking glasses they used to hmm. drink with, hitting some salt on their beer. Maybe they knew what they were doing with that. You know what? I might be thinking of cocaine. They might just cocaine <laughs> their beer. <laughs> I don't think I, I've never eaten a fried pickle. And I don't want to. It sounds disgusting to me. They're I've, delicious. I have eaten it, and it only in a bar sit- setting, and they were good. But again, I'm not sure how I would feel about it out of that setting. If it's an actually good food, I enjoy uh, fried pickles. I think I think you would too. <laughs> I'm not a drunk anymore, Chris. No, I didn't the, fucking hear. Maybe that so- didn't come up. All right, I had a moment of clarity. Well, everyone else had a moment of clarity around me. And I said, okay. <laughs> it does sound pretty clear. Well, you know what? I never got that thing. You know why? Why? Not enough people love me. Hmm. Mm. That's terrible. It is terrible. It, believe me. I go back and think about it every once in a while. I'm like, everybody I know had their fucking loved ones gather around them, and I didn't. Be like Chris's family fucking approaching him. Well, there is no family. But I'm saying if there were ghosts. <laughs> This is a ghost intervention. <laughs> hey, Vita, that thing that you've been working on, do we need to have Chris involved or we don't? Yeah, Chris Chris is giving me like info. I need to give Dude, this guy a few records. Shit has to happen on the air. Well, he needs to get stuff, and then he said he he needs to get everything and collect stuff, and then... I know, but way. this should be brought up on the air, not off the air. Vito has no fucking connection to the show business. Chris? Yes. Has, have you even been told about this? Uh, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Well, we have a guy who is going to trace your fra- family roots. And is it from Ancestry.com type of deal? Uh, no, it's like a private guy. He has like his own business. A, sh- like a, it's like a ge- genetic detective. Ge- a, gene- a genealogy uh, researcher. Okay. And what he's going to do is find out who the unexplained Jews are to you. That's very exciting. Because you found out what percentage of you is Jewish? I'm 18.9% Ashkenazi Jew. So you've got a, a maybe a grandparent who is mostly Jewish. Now, here's... Yeah, that's yeah. that's giant. Yeah. Now, here's the deal. None of these New York Jews have em- embraced Chris. No. But the California Jews yesterday all acted like, oh, this is fantastic. And I think that's because they're watered down, too. Yeah. They're not as pure. They were like, welcome. Yeah, but, the, but a Hoboken Jew doesn't see you as being Jewish no. at all. They look down on me, and I'm part of the tribe. I don't get it. <laughs> For I mean, some reason, they don't see you that way. Just be accepting of me. I'm 20% Jew. Yeah, that's not enough to be accepting. Well, then I don't accept Let me them. ask you this. If, if someone came to you and said, I'm 20% white, welcome to the white family. <laughs> you're, gonna be, no, you're no longer white, Chris. That's not really. really. And like the other, I'm also 28% Baltic, and that's Gypsy. 
That's not white. But still, we accept that more than we do the other. <laughs> Actually, Hitler killed the, uh, the gypsies, too. Yeah. No one ever brings it up. How many gypsies were killed during the war? I didn't realize he had a beef against the gypsies. Those gypsies, yeah. the Jews. gays, and Jews. And um, you hear it from the special people needs in the town too. they'd call it. Special needs as well? Mm-hmm. That would make a great movie. Uh, hey, Foyt. Foyt, what's up? I heard you talking about the hangover remedies. I got yeah. the best one. What's Pringles, that? Pringles potato chip milkshake, man. What? You Pringles just and what? Milkshake. Pring- Pringles milkshake. Just grind them up in the, in the milk and there you go. You got your fat, you got your salt. And this... This seems more like something to help you throw up rather than to make yes. you feel better. That also makes you feel better. If you, uh, I like a little cayenne pepper right in the middle of a Mountain Dew. And, uh, all five <laughs> uh, do you like food combining? Is That seems to be the thing these days, right? Yes, I do. And like, I think everybody always has like at least one like weird food combination. Well, the, some food combinations are considered weird until they're completely accepted. Right. Like the sea salt and chocolate. It wasn't that long ago. People were like, they put sea salt on their chocolate. Now you can't get around it. I know. Every dessert place has a salted chocolate or salted caramel. You know what I mean? Or As sal- a- salted chocolate caramel. Yeah, exactly. Every place does that now. 100%. But I I have a weird food combination that I got into when I was a kid that I'm like, I don't know many people who do it, but I like cream cheese on an Eggo waffle. So instead of eating an Eggo waffle like a regular waffle with butter and syrup, I put cream cheese on the top of it and just eat it like that toasted with cream cheese. I never understand uh, having anything but butter. I mean, if you have a chance to have butter with a meal, <laughs> right. you're like, this is the best meal ever. Because most, most meals won't let you just put butter on it. Right. You know what I mean? Like a pancake, they're like, go ahead, like, put some butter on it. You're like, are you serious? That's like, I can just put butter on this. Like how we said that uh, the best thing about a surf and turf is not the fact that you're eating steak and lobster together. It's that you're able to, without judgment, dip your steak in that side butter. I know. That you know is intended. <laughs> it is intended for the lobster, but I use it for if the steak as well. If anybody complains, I just... Just go like this, all going to the same gut. <laughs> all right. Someone wrote mm, an ego with butter and syrup. Yes, that's the way it's supposed to go. <laughs> that's not an odd food combination. You did it exactly the way it's advertised. I'll make a sandwich for myself and put peanut butter into like the middle of it, like with like chicken and cheese and stuff. I'll use peanut butter as just a, re- a weird dressing sometimes. What do you mean? So I'll make like a little like home cold cut with like. Chicken breast, like buffalo chicken breast, and maybe a little roast beef, and then on the the bread, First I'll put of all, some peanut let, let, butter on. Let's just stop for a second. So you put buffalo chicken breast. So you're putting a hot yeah chicken breast. Then, weirdly enough, that's not enough for you. You put roast beef on that. I like multiple meats on a sandwich. Yeah, just but relax and don't... go one at a time. I don't want you to. I want to be specifics. So then you take two things that don't go together. <laughs> that's already and then you weird. put peanut butter, Vito. Looks like you're going to have a baby. <laughs> Those are your pregnancy cravings. <laughs> He's going to be a soccer player. <laughs> Fido, that's disgusting. That's really gross, Fido. That's really gross. I can't believe how shocked you are. I thought the peanut butter was Dude. the weird part. I don't know that the, the chicken and the roast beef part is. It's all Dude, weird. You eat like somebody who's your size. <laughs> Everyone is going to be shocked by the mess. All, you know what he does? Everything that's in the fridge in it. <sighs> yeah. I'll go eat it all. I do like to. I do like to make work out of everything. That's Nobody in there. uses fucking peanut butter as a condiment. Okay, no, I just... it is a fucking steady, ready go <laughs> thing for itself. It's a spread, bro. Why don't you put an ear of corn on it? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. It really doesn't taste that bad when it's that close to cheese. Like, Who wants to be not me. that bad? What it's not mean? what I'm looking there, for. Wait, hold on. There's cheese on it too. So what now kind of sandwich doesn't have cheese on it. So you're saying there's peanut cheese, butter and jelly, peanut <laughs> butter, one. which is here's the thing. I gave you two ingredients that were not common together. You gave us four that have uh, everything about this. I is don't think me. that I I understand the peanut butter is weird, but I don't understand how the chicken and the roast beef is weird. Look, if you told me you had something like 
a, a cold cut sandwich with two different lunch meats on it, I'll be okay. But you're talking about a chicken and a beef. It doesn't, it doesn't make together. sense. No. I can't believe it's not like two Italian cured meats mixed together like you would do on an Italian sandwich. Yes, there are multiple meats on some sandwiches, but the like a ch- uh, a buffalo chicken breast with a nobody roast takes beef? something that that isn't sliced and puts another meat with it. No, no, this is sliced. This is sliced buffalo chicken breast. They like right. they spice it. He's it. not even Italian, man. What is what is? You're a fucking suburban chicken? weirdo. It, it's like <laughs> Chris, Chris. Do you see what you caused us today? <laughs> I, look, I, I don't like that this happened, but it had to just for today. I'll be back in there in no time. No, you're not coming back, dude. Yeah. You're fucking banned. <laughs> no matter what, the combination is bad. Banned from the show. <laughs> banned <laughs> from the show. <laughs> but your hair looks great. <laughs> your fucking hair is gorgeous. Vito, that's one thing that you're always trying to say you look like Chris. But you actually put a do-rag on your head because your hair is so shitty. <laughs> and Chris yeah. Stanley has the fucking hair of a model. He it's does. gorgeous hair. He has beautiful hair. I should have been a hair model in another life. Dude, that's fucking straight out of my show. Because that's something my grandmother said to me. Really? Yeah. She told me that I was going to grow up to be a hair model. <laughs> Guess what? It didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I always said the kind of, when I was a little kid... The kind of hair that old ladies liked. Where they just keep touching it? Yeah, it was like an old lady perm. Like, they wanted my hair, because they could tell I never combed it. I had roll out of bed fucking hair. You know what I mean? Just like, oh my God, his hair's fantastic. He's got the hair of a 75-year-old woman. (laughs) Here's some buffalo chicken, some beef, some peanut butter and cheese. Okay? (laughs) Guess what, Vito? You're banned from going to Conan tonight. Banned from Conan. I will guarantee you this. <laughs> I'm not. I was going to call Laurie Kilmartin to see if she would take you backstage. No, I can't risk it. I no. won't bring up the sandwich thing. Dude, don't, it doesn't matter. You're going to say something that's going to embarrass the rest of us. I'll just shut my mouth. I'll say hello and thank you, and that's it. Do that on this show. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be sitting in Conan's fucking room with him. He <laughs> takes lap. Yeah. In the bathtub. That's the dream. You had Laurie on your show, right? Yes. She's so, so great. She's so great. She's so pretty. She's so funny. Really and I like loved her, her special that yeah. she did was just fantastic. I don't know what's going on with her love life either. I've got a couple, you know. I got a couple theories. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh. It's a dish. I think she is a secret East Coast boyfriend. Whoa. She is here a lot. She's here for a lot. For someone who lives on the West Coast. She lives on the West Coast. She's got a writing job for Conan, who, quite frankly, she doesn't even make that seem like it's a big deal. And it is. <laughs> it's like she doesn't even put it in her intro. <laughs> I know. I put it in her intro the last time she was. I worked with her. By the way, she's doing a, fr- uh, a Friday hour. Um, she had a plan, too. She's going to talk slower, she said. <laughs> Um, but I said she's a writer for Conan. People start going popping, popping off. That's very. A lot cool of people thing. don't like people to pop off for them. <laughs> I do like it. I like <laughs> to come up there with a little energy. Um, Ed, Oklahoma. Hey man, the best food pairing, especially if you're a little high, is bologna with a chocolate chip cookie on it. Well, oh. That's just horrific. That's so. That's not food. That's made up. Oh, gotta try. It. No, <laughs> because bologna is just thinly sliced cold hot dog. So, do you want a hot dog chocolate chip combination? No. It's always wet. It is. <laughs> it is one of the wetter meats. I will always agree. Soaking wet. It sweats. <laughs> it sweats. Is uh, that is true? It it does have the uncooked hot dog, but then if somebody has a cooked like fried bologna I'm like oh. oh you're disgusting yeah but a fried hot dog doesn't disgust me the, uh, are you 100 percent sure that a hot dog is bologna well i feel like it's they taste very similar it's got to be a similar combination of meats and entrails of animal it is more entrail than meat i don't know if they can officially call themselves the meat 
But like that's, I mean, like a a bologna. It just seems like a different shaped hot dog. Oh, I just want to bring something up. Uh, Vito is always bringing us possible guests, and he brought up one yesterday that I said yes to. And then I'm sitting at my house last night and go, wait, not in a million years. Let's say a certain rock star's wife. Really? There's no way. Yeah. She does press. No fucking way. (laughs) For 50 years, she could have traveled around doing radio press and never has. Right. And that's the book she's going to write instead of, you know what? Uh, Caroline in Atlanta. Caroline. Hey, uh, so I don't do it anymore, but when I was a kid, I like Golden Corral. I would get a cucumber sliced and then like pepperoni and I'd put blue cheese on it. So there's that. So it's like a sliced cucumber, sliced pepperoni yeah. topped with blue cheese. Yeah. It's, I mean, I liked them all separately, so... I guess together they're just better. I mean, that, that makes sense to me, at least. It's not as bizarre. Can I just yeah. say this? Caroline says, as she gets up off the floor, you can beat me, but I don't love you anymore. Anyway, I miss Lou Reed. That's all I'm saying, Caroline. <laughs> I miss, seriously, well, thank you so I much. never bring that up enough. I miss Lou Reed. Almost on a daily basis. I was uh, watching um, the Julian Schnabel Mm -hmm. documentary. I highly recommend it to you, Gail. I highly recommend it to anybody who's not a Julian Schnabel, um, doesn't know much about him. He's the, the great painter who became a great director. But this documentary, and it's his family and friends around him, Apparently, he's only done wonderful things and genius work. Like, people don't realize that a documentary is not supposed to be like a toast to them. Right. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And I'm like, you can't be married as many times as you. And nobody's got a beef. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what happens. I guess just unlucky. (laughs) It's everyone else's fault because he's great. But being a like a crazy painter looks like the most fucking fun in the world. Yeah, it does. It, because I feel like people let you be eccentric. Yes. Like if you have most regular jobs and you feel like behaving strangely, people are like, the fuck? What's the deal with that guy? Who does he think he is? But you're like, look, he's an artist. He's doing his own weird thing. He's walking around in his jammies. He's allowed. If there's paint on his jammies. <laughs> and then he's going out to dinner. And those painted jammies with a nice suit coat on. And no one's going like this. Sir, you can't come in here right now. <laughs> I don't give a fuck how many paintings you've sold. You're nuts. I saw him once in um, Montauk. He's got a beautiful place in Montauk. Yeah. I Gorgeous. Saw, I saw him walking around the, like, the little town there. And he was just kind of like looking in like store windows and then like eventually went into like a men's store. But I was just like in awe of like wa- watching him walk around. That's everyone in his life is like that. his <laughs> own children. My dad's a genius. What can I tell you? <laughs> but I would like I think it would be like fascinating to see what it's like to have your dad's a genius and then have that shadow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like uh, aren't people going like this? Do you paint it all? You don't paint. Your dad's such a genius, and you've got none of it, huh? Well, I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I buffed this place up with Vito and Chris. So people are like, oh, she's quick. <laughs> she's quick. But she, if you were a genius, you'd never get stuck in fucking radio for a career. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Sarah. Hey. Yeah. How you guys doing? Cool. So I got a yummy for you guys. Mm-hmm. Back when I worked in a pizza place, I'd take the giant raviolis and I'd fry them. And then I'd take a sub, like a sub roll, and I'd put a layer of pizza sauce and then cheese and then all these fried raviolis, then another layer of pizza sauce, another layer of cheese, then I'd wrap the whole thing up and bake it in the oven. 
Dude, I'd fucking eat this yeah, right I now. Mean, this this is, is, sounds like I'm you're so on to hungry. something. <laughs> I can't believe how <laughs> this hungry I am. the best you'll ever taste. Cheese raviolis, a fried cheese ravioli sub. I, I, I just, I'm, uh, I, can you get a picture of it for us, though? I can't. I mean, it was back in the 80s. I've never heard of anybody else doing it. Dude, you, you fucked up. You could have started a chain. This food sounds <laughs> fantastic. Pretty right? good pride sub. Yeah. Oh, for subiolis. You know what's uh, funny? Is like, uh, like a good stromboli. It's either the best thing or worst thing in the world. But when it's made right, you're like, this is fucking fantastic. Yeah. But it's made poorly so much of the time that you don't even throw it in. You know. Yeah, because normally when you get it, if you're just like getting it from some like garbage corner place, yeah, it's just kind of terrible. Gross. Yeah. Caroline says mm. he sounds so weak during that song. <laughs> like he's just. How many things, how many times in a in a song does he just use a woman's name and then says, says? <laughs> yeah. It happens over and over and Stephanie over. Stephanie says. Stephanie Jane says. Yeah. Crazy. Lou, there's starting to be a thing. You're getting in one rut. <laughs> Lou, Stephanie you got to change says. the first line of this. <laughs> Vito's going to go backstage tonight. Did we ever find out who's on the show? I believe Bill Clinton is on the show tonight. Dude! What? what? Why does he say, I believe, instead of saying Bill Clinton's on the show? I got secondhand information. I didn't find it myself. From who? Paul. Paul the baller. Uh, that's better information than you having it. Bill Clinton's on the show tonight. But wow. why would you bring it up to us? Why would I have to go in there with a pair of pliers and pull your fucking tooth? That was my bed. No, but you're like, eh, I just wanted to break in because I've been choking on my own spit. <laughs> He'll fucking throw it for the... Look at his hair flopping around. He knows uh, it's gorgeous. Uh, <laughs> you fucking... You're trying to sexy, tease us. You sexy little <laughs> bastard. He was sitting slanted, too, like with his... He's gorgeous. Oh, Tom uh, Tom Sharpling just texted me. Lisa says, also. Lisa says... Phew. A lot of says... What is with this fucking man? Dude has a says thing. There's some stuff in there about Lou in his last days. and Oh, really? And how good Schnabel was. I told you that time I went to see Lou Reed's photography thing. It was, um, you know, it was like the opening night at the gallery. So they had all these fucking New York types. And me and Earl had a... Uh, were invited to it. It was like the only really fucking weird thing like that I've ever gone to. And the only person looking at the photography was Snobble. Oh, yeah. He was going Taking around it looking. serious. Yeah, he was looking at each one. And I looked at everyone else. They were just like drinking. Hey, I like having these free drinks. <laughs> I'm going to act like I don't see Lou Reed. And then that entire fucking place shut its mouth. When the thin white Duke, Mr. David Bowie, walked into that room. I can't imagine what that was like. I'm going to tell you this. The silence was coming towards us. Like, the whole room was talking. But when, when he came up the steps, everyone that was near him got quiet. And then all the way up, the room just got quiet in section by section As by they, section. Because like, everybody him. realized it was Bowie. Holy shit. And now he's gone. You think we're going to have another David Bowie? No. You ever see any of these toddlers? There's not a Bowie in any of them. They're like, G-ga, G-ga. I go, Guga? How about fucking coming up with a decent song? <laughs> One of you guys, just pick up the goddamn <laughs> Bowie mantle. They just like Minecraft. No baby plays Minecraft, Chris. I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't knock up that Costa Rican you're with right now. No one's getting knocked up. You'd be surprised. <laughs> you would be fucking surprised. Uh, Walter in Texas. How you doing, man? Um, you there? Yeah. 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 Apple pie with a slice of sharp cheddar cheese on it. Well, that's a standard issue. Yeah, I've heard people do this. A yeah. standard yeah. issue. It, it's a southern thing, man. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I've seen it up north, too. And I've seen it out west. Although, you don't want to know something? Even though I hear about it Stunning all the time. woman right there. I've never done it. 
What's that? The ch- like the melted cheddar cheese on an apple pie. No, because they go like this. You want melted cheddar cheese or ice cream? You're going to go like this. Throw the ice cream on. <laughs> By the way, I don't like when anybody goes to like a flavored ice cream like that. That's disgusting to me. Like if you add a flavored ice cream to a cake or a pie. You got to put vanilla in there. Right. I, I would agree with that. That's like having a flavored whipped cream. You'd be but you're an not going to have like a strawberry cake and then like a mint chocolate chip ice Thank cream you. scoop on the Thank side. Thank you. Unless you were pretty high. <laughs> so you're going to see uh, the former president, Bill Clinton. I wow. can't believe I'm going to see if I've never seen a former president in person. You haven't? No. I was trying to think. We've never even had any come in here. Mm-mm. No, the closest no. was was uh, Hillary was here. That's not close. That's like saying Bill Bradley's here all the time. <laughs> and then I spoke to Donald Trump on the phone one time, but that was that's pretty good though. That was good. But this is seeing Conan talk to Bill Clinton. I can't wait. And uh, Jack Whitehall's going to be there too. Oh, from the Whitehall stripes. I think so. But yeah, it's going to be a great show. That's really exciting, dude. I got to record something after the show today, Chris. Yes. Stick that right up your goddamn <laughs> ass. <laughs> you beautiful hair inside of a bitch. Okay. <laughs> you know what? We were joking about the hair model thing, but I wouldn't mind calling a shampoo company right now. Because like, look at, you know what it is? Look at the part on the side and then like the swoop over the one eye. You got to keep this up, man, because sometimes your hair looks nuts, but this is great. I don't know how it became like this as a mind of its own. I don't know how to control it. Did you wash your hair today or yesterday? No, I did not. See, that's the thing. Sometimes, you know, first day wash is not good. Yeah. Second or third day. Pretty nice. uh, Why don't you go 40th or 50th? (laughs) He doesn't even own shampoo. (laughs) You know when he washes his hair? When he checks into a hotel. <laughs> now I'm sure you're using some of the Costa Rican brand that your girlfriend has. Did you sleep at your house or her house last night? I slept at her house last night. Mm. What size bed she have? She has a queen. Oh. Two of you push your way into a queen? It's fine. We fit fine in a queen. I don't like fucking sleeping in small beds. I'm not going to lie. I have a full. It's not easy. Oh. It's not I go easy. straight king. I have a twin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's Chris Stanley. <laughs> Dude, let's get a picture of you two making out. You and Vito. Yeah, that'd be no, good. No, not making out. Come on, man. Vito. Come kiss me in the mouth. You know what we'll do? We'll sell What's it that? to gay daddy sites. <laughs> Look at these two this big is daddies. Double daddy. Yeah. Dude, does anybody own doubledaddy.com? I'm going to check right now. Good. Get it for us. If not, me and you, Chris, we're going to kiss on there. <laughs> Dude, you know what would be better? Just put your tongue up his ass. Okay, he just has to wash first. That's my mm. only stipulation. Not gonna happen. Why don't uh, you wash your tongue first? We uh, doubledaddy.com is taken, but we could get doubledaddy.org or .info. <laughs> you're not, <laughs> you're not in the you know organization. Why? Then we'll make doubledaddy.com rich as people are trying to find us. Yeah, <laughs> doubledaddy.info. What about doubled daddy? <laughs> no. no. We can get doubledaddy.net <laughs> for six grand. That sounds worth it. Dot com or bust. <laughs> All right, now people are telling me um, it's owned but not being used. DoubleDaddy.com. We can get ManDaddyLove.com. <laughs> That's what? too far away. That has nothing to do with I what we're doing. for ManDaddyLove. <laughs> That's his favorite fucking <laughs> search engine. And if it's a daddy, the man is implied. Yeah, a ma- I'm a man daddy. I go out with a girl daddy right now, and she's fantastic. <laughs> you are so progressive. Yeah. Aren't I? I'm so 17. <laughs> almost 18. <laughs> we get yummydaddy.com for 3200 Let's just get yummy daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you said that you make your chick call you daddy? No, I don't. And sweet daddy? <laughs> sweet daddy. Sweet daddy, sure. Sweet daddy's Aww, got some cute. money. It is cute. <laughs> Sweet Daddy's got some money for you. Sweet Daddy's here. <laughs> That's nice, Chris. That's really cute. Mm. And we got a break here and come back and dish. What is it, Vito? You're handing me fucking papers every time you turn around. <laughs> You're turning into a real Chris. All right, well, here's the, here's the live read. Vito is a goddamn cock. <laughs> 
Hey, you can't go tonight to see Bill Clinton. I hope he plays the saxophone oh, like he does. Oh, that would be great. You think he'll do a song? I, I don't know if I'm going now. <laughs> no, you're not going. You know why? You're working on DoubleDaddy.com. <laughs> <laughs> I can do both. Send Daniel Spaventa instead. Disco Dan. <laughs> Why would you, you say, say that? full name? Yeah, why do you say somebody's last name, Chris Stanley? <laughs> yeah, no Stanley. <laughs> Phone number 917. No. <laughs> Stuttering Stanley. Stuttering Stanley. Stuttering Stanley. Stuttering Stanley. Shut, shut up. Shut up. That guy just suddenly, instead of turning into a stutterer, becomes special needs in a special needs bus. <laughs> Um, my needs are special, please. Not like everybody else's needs. It's not just about shelter and food. I have other needs, special ones. For instance, I can't have anything sharp around me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about dish, baby. Are you frustrated that your uh -huh. TV bill continues to change month to month? Every month. Dish heard you, and they changed it with the Dish two-year TV price guarantee. New customers can get the channels they want at the same price, at the same package price guaranteed for two whole years. That means two years of the TV you love at the same monthly price guaranteed. No second-year price increase, no gotcha moments, or unwelcome surprising. That's the Dish two-year TV. TV price guarantee because only Dish is tuned into you. To learn more, call one eight four four call Dish or go to Dish dot com or visit a local retailer near you. Requires credit qualification, twenty four month commitment, early termination fee, and e auto pay. Taxes and surcharges not included. Other restrictions apply. For full details, one eight four four call Dish. Dish tuned into you. <laughs> Phones, Jen's got the news. Let's dish to the gossip they're saying on the radio. Welcome back to Bennington. And uh, well, you heard the opening for Dish, but we have a co host <laughs> with Jen today. The one and only Robert Kelly is yeah! here. Uh, this is my gossip character voice <laughs> that I'm using today. Whenever I do gossip, yeah. whenever I go down the gossip road, yeah. I do this voice. <laughs> Let's talk about it. I don't know. That's my thing. I Let's love go. that. It's gossip time. Who's in the news today? Those little scoundrels. <laughs> Fuck them. Let's bury them. <laughs> That's good. Let's do it. Yeah. What do you got? You know what? This is interesting. This started off, this is a paid segment by who? It is by Dish. The last Dish segment is brought to you by Dish. Dish listens when no one else does. Dish tuned in to you. To learn more and sign up today, call 1844, call Dish, go to dish.com, visit a local retailer near you. That's my favorite word, Dish, because dish. I'm a chubby you and I love dishes. Dish. I hate doing them, though. <laughs> That's why I got married, kind of. Do you remember who was here last time for Dish? Y yes, yeah. last Wednesday we had Bonnie. Bonnie Mc McFarlane. Bonnie McFarlane <laughs> and now Robert Kelly, and both of these were this, surprises. I know. Oh, I got I some dish on that Bonnie bitch. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something about her boyfriend. <laughs> this pecker isn't all what has lived up to me. <laughs> I'd rather sit in his face, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, that isn't hard to figure out. <laughs> that is very a, clear. That is a very bad joke. <laughs> all right, let's get a little dish. So this one's up on the eye bang. Mm -hmm. Johnny Depp was... Uh, me <laughs> too. Ooh. <laughs> Johnny <me>. Depp. <laughs> <laughs> he was allegedly drunk oh, during boy. the premiere of his new film, Murder on the Orient Express. He had to be helped down the red carpet, and he seemed to be drunk on stage when he was You know <laughs> why? Because he's rich. So, yes. he, he's got, right. he's just going to be drunk every day. I mean, what do you expect of the tattoo? Why no forever? Yeah, that's what it does say. <laughs> yeah, and how are you going to kill those rotten teeth smell? His, <laughs> maybe if he's 
stopped buying so much wine and booze, <laughs> he could get those wretched pirate teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, goddamn. T- he's taking acting too far. You don't have to have pirate breath, you fucking asshole. Ooh, dishy. <laughs> you dishy. Oh. You try kissing him. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather suck his dick than kiss him. I, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> I, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Next dish. <laughs> More dish, please. <laughs> well, Diddy, he recently changed Diddy. his name. Yes, P. Diddy. He, he re- did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he changed his name on his birthday to Brother Love, which caused up a stir on Twitter because uh, there's already a manager in wrestling name. Yeah, Brother Love. Brother Love. <laughs> yes. I love you. I it's my did. favorite porn genre, Brother Love. <laughs> uh, where's mom? I don't know. Well, let's get to it. Dish it. <laughs> Dish it. Go to brotherlove.com and see if there isn't two twins <laughs> making out. Don't really go there. Well, again, they, tra- they track this stuff. <laughs> well, the original brother love, he tweeted to Diddy saying, yo, find a new gimmick. I invented and perfected brother love. That's I'm true. the original. You are not. Remember, North Carolina. What's wrong with the name Puffy? That's the way he came in. Yeah, I never puffy. even I never even call him Diddy. It's my favorite thing yeah. was when it's Puffy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> He's incorrigible. He's incorrigible. I, I am. Stop it. You're making me blush like brother love. <laughs> so then Diddy put up a video saying that he was just kidding and not to take him serious. So then right. <laughs> the real brother, brother love said, you stay in your world and I, I'll stay in mine because I don't want to have to get you out inside of a solid steel cage and open up my own can of whoop ass on you. Well, you've never won a match anyway. Yeah. Brother love. Who are you beating up on? <laughs> <laughs> Whose brother is he? He's somebody's brother, right? Uh, he's is he? Um, I don't know. I'm Dusty, you. Dusty Rhodes' brother, isn't he? No, no. Dusty okay. Rhodes. Uh, yeah, I was with <laughs> you, girl. Yeah. They said no too quick, yeah. <laughs> especially in these times. Well, hey, we know this. Dusty's an orphan, so he has no brothers. <laughs> Vito, anybody can look it up on Wikipedia. You're supposed to be the wrestling he's, expert. He's Tom Pritchard's brother. Thank you. Thank you. Also known as Dusty Rose. <laughs> right? That would be amazing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather sit on his face if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Dish. 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 You are a pill. <laughs> That's I took swallow a, him. <laughs> I took a couple before this show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I need some water. Oh, agua, as they say in my house. Agua? You got agua. Yeah, because I have a bunch of little Spanish boys around fixing things. <laughs> <laughs> so Richard Dreyfus's son, uh, Harry Dreyfus, says that Kevin Spacey... Lovely man. <laughs> yeah. Loves to be carried to the bed. <laughs> he groped him back in 2008 yeah. when him and his dad went to his house to rehearse lunch lines for a script and this is what harry said about the awkward encounter once again kevin followed me sat down and with considerable effort slid his hand between my right hand and my right leg over the course of about 20 seconds centimeter by centimeter kevin crawled his hand from my thigh over toward the over toward my crotch my mind Mm. went blank suddenly he had completed his journey and now he had all of me in his hand. Well, you know what? That's called trust or don't trust. <laughs> and all you have to do is say don't trust and slap the hand away if you don't want any more. <laughs> Just don't keep your mouth shut. Play the game, you little bitch boy. <laughs> That's now, victim blaming. <laughs> That's victim blaming. That's, yeah, yeah, but if you say it fun, I mean, yeah, fun. Okay, you're right. <laughs> Trust me, don't. Trust me, don't. There's a, there's a, there's a limit to every game. Yeah. <laughs> He's lucky that I didn't take him into the closet and play seven minutes in heaven. <laughs> or I like to call it, put it in my mouth. <laughs> That's blunt. <laughs> so, if you know what I mean. Put it in my blood. If you know what I mean. <laughs> Put it in my mouth and jizz in there. Well, oh, that's too much. I don't want that. We didn't have lunch yet. <laughs> Dish it. <laughs> well, Marilyn Manson, uh, oh, <laughs> um, he had a concert right after, you know, the whole San Bernardino shooting happened. And he caused a stir because he was defending pointing a, gu- a fake rifle at his crowd during the concert. He says... It wasn't an- San Bernardino, was it? With the in Texas, yes. That's what the name of that town oh, was? it is? 
Um, it was a show at Knotfest meets Ozfest oh in San gosh. Bernardino. Oh, oh that the, yeah. the couple of my favorite oh, things. Gotcha. Knots. Yeah, yeah. But it Knot was like after the meats. <laughs> <laughs> I love little balloon knots. <laughs> Put, I love meats. <laughs> and I love mansum. <laughs> Keep talking. Point your guns at the crowd. What are you talking? It's all a metaphor. Dish <laughs> it. So <laughs> 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 Everything's so fun. Yeah, we well, this was what, honey, life's too short. <laughs> Life is too short, and so are my underwear. <laughs> so, in his defense, he said, "In an era where mass shootings have become a nearly daily occurrence, there this was an act of theater, an attempt to make a statement about how easily accessible semi-automatic weapons are, and how seeing them has become normalized." Just say that instead of fucking pointing it as a, a machine gun at your audience. Yeah. I would expect that. Guys, get, get it? Yeah. No, yeah. Funny, yeah, we got it what? when you shaved your eyebrows off, you fucking psycho. You're scaring everybody. <laughs> Put a shirt on and call it a day, you no-neck son of a bitch. <laughs> Dish. Dish. <laughs> you and Johnny Christ <laughs> used to be hot. Now you guys are like two fucking mummified assholes on the hills. Dish it. Dish it. Dish it. He's too fucking good at this, by the way. This is frighteningly good. This is character. What are we waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, look at that sexy hair on Chris Stanley. Oh God, I can't. <laughs> I'm so glad there's glass there. <laughs> there's better be three feet like a shark tank because I'm going to smash through it like a bullet. <laughs> Dish it. What's next? <laughs> He's behind the glass like like this was 42nd Street, oh, 83. My God. It's like Magnum P.I. got stung by bees. <laughs> Fucking love him. <laughs> Nothing better than a chunky, hairy guy. <laughs> Dish it. Magnum P.I. Is stung by bees. <laughs> You're swell. You're swell. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but stop it with the sexy hair. It's crazy. I can't help it. I can't. Oh, you can help it. Get a scrunchie, you bastard. <laughs> the fuck you think they made them for? <laughs> God damn it! Put it on your wrist and keep it there. In case when someone says you're too sexy, put it in there and hold it back. Spit in your hand like Clark Gable. You fucking asshole. Dish it. <laughs> This is part of the dish. Yeah. <laughs> dish it. I'm dish it. <laughs> All right, next dish. Dish. Bitch. Well, Caitlyn Jenner is possibly dating a twenty-year-old, twenty-one-year-old trans model. Her name is Sophia Hutchins. Wait, she's Hutchins. trans too? Yes. Oh <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> I got to see this. Yeah, I saw she's... her yesterday, and I did not know trans model. Oh, that's called. <laughs> well, those two get together. It's called mush and bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> they were. So, Ooh, wait, this dish is... it. This is the the girlfriend. Yeah. Yes. Well, the, allegedly they're saying just friends. Yeah. yeah. But okay. Come on, look at the. They both have the same pouty mouth. Yeah. They, yeah. Both, <laughs> they both went to, off the rack and bought those blouses. <laughs> come on, dish it. <laughs> I've seen those jeans. My aunt just bought those jeans. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> why, why do they both have that expression? Like the we. Duck face? Yeah. Like we just came back from the dentist. Yeah, well. <laughs> uh, if your moisturizer is the other person's jizz, your face would be stuck one way too. <laughs> You're right. Dish it. Dish. <laughs> you know what I Talk mean. about a mass shooting. <laughs> Dish it. Dish. What you got? <laughs> what you got? <laughs> <laughs> well, Kanye, um, so he might come come out with his own streaming oh, he should service. Come that's out. what I say when I, that's, what I, that's what I say when I have a good time. Come, yay! Oh, I'm sorry. What was his name again? Oh, dish it. Dish. <laughs> he submitted a trademark application that is very similar to title called Yeezy Sound, and they're saying it was. <laughs> It's because he's upset with uh, Jay Z because he felt like Title owed him three point five million dollars for an unpaid advances and bonuses for his Life of Pablo album. Wow! So they are they are not together anymore. They were no, bros and not. now <laughs> they're hoes. No. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened to me and all my friends. We were bros now we're hoes. <laughs> Look at the two broads on the screen. <laughs> Dish it! Dish. That's what happened everywhere. Did you see the elections last night, honey? It's going down. The bros are becoming hoes. <laughs> I can't wait to see the next superhero movie. <laughs> my, my superhero power. I take my penis out and everybody's in awe because it glows like a piece of gold. <laughs> Dish it! What else you got, bitch? 
<laughs> no, people are asking if there's a new name for this character because they think this could be your Chip Chipperson. People are writing it. <laughs> oh, fucking Chip. Just, just this. <laughs> I'll fuck the shit out of that guy. <laughs> I'll, I'll fuck the stutter out of that bitch. <laughs> I'll make him normal. <laughs> I'll turn him back into Jim Norton. <laughs> Dish it. What do you got? <laughs> well, Mariah Carey's former security guard. Hater. <laughs> Oh, mm. us haters gotta hate. Oh, she, you listen, you have to hate her. My God, what did she? <laughs> you're not supposed to turn into a tranny. <laughs> dish it. <laughs> it's all okay when he says dish it. <laughs> it's fun then. It's fun then. Oh, what does this bitch have to say? So he's suing her for Who's suing her. <laughs> her su uh, former security guard. His mm -hmm. name is Michael Anello. Lovely guy. Yeah. <laughs> I know him. He secured me he's one night at a. Bon Jovi concert. I was trying to get in backstage. That's another dish for another day. Dish it. Go. So, dish it. so he's suing her for sexual harassment because mm. he says that on a trip to Cabo San Lucas, um, mm. Mariah asked him to come to her room to move some luggage. And when he got there, she was wearing a see-through negligee that was open. He says he tried leaving, but she insisted he move the luggage. He says he left the room and there was no physical contact. But he's also suing her um, because he says that she humiliated humiliated him constantly by calling him a Nazi, KKK <laughs> member, and a white supremacist. Well, you gotta get rid of those swastika tattoos and you won't have that problem. You fuck, maybe grow some hair back, you fucking asshole. <laughs> and he also claims stop, that... Stop hailing Hitler. <laughs> he also claims Mariah wanted to be surrounded with black guys, not white people. Of course she does. <laughs> Who wouldn't? <laughs> Come on, if I'm, in the pit, if I'm in the ding ding game, I want black guys around me all the time. Dish it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I want a bunch of Irish peckers around me? Get out of town. Get those black guys and maybe one Puerto Rican or a Dominican because I like those little snuffleupagus trunks. <laughs> Dish it! Dish! <laughs> oh, I like it to take 10 or 15 minutes to shuffle that back and put it in my mouth. Dish it! Dish! What else we got? <laughs> Fuck that bitch. Who cares about her? <laughs> take your clothes off in front of a security guard. What can you trollop? <laughs> Put it back on. Well, you can't fuck a security guard. It's over, honey. Bro, I wish they could put penises on girls instead of taking them off. <laughs> oh, look at that. I even got I even got the fucking Knight Rider in the back over there. David Hasselhoff fucking found that funny. I heard him through the glass. <laughs> Flip your hair, you fucking cocksucker. <laughs> Dish it. What else you got? <laughs> so LeBron James. Oh, oh he's the garbage. Oh, boy. <laughs> he allegedly slid into this Instagram model's DMs. Her name is Heidi Hoback. No, wait. What did he do to her? Oh, uh, she. He slid in her DMs. I he, went, we slide into DMs. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what they, they say. Yeah. I will he slide into the DMs. It's kind of like mean? when you're hitting on somebody. That's what they refer to as like sliding in the. In the DM. The only time you slide into my DM is if I let you, honey. And you better put some lube on it. Because I'm not, I'm, not I'm not as open as you think. I do Kegels every weekend with my butt cheeks. Dish it. Go. Dish it. You'll have to slide so. into his BMs. <laughs> this is her? Yeah, that's her. <laughs> oh, she's. Oh, my God. She's sassy. Look at that. Well, what army is she in? The, the twat army? My God. She's a cop now oh my god arrest me <laughs> oh my god we, uh, we can scissor uh oh she loves fishing she loves fishing in underwear oh my god look at that it's bass g-string in a giant bass no, i'd rather stick my dick in that bass's mouth dish it so she uh posted uh the exchange between her and lebron she covered what she said but uh what lebron said to her was teach me how to hunt and i'll teach you how to play ball deal and oh, then another god, LeBron. Ugh. And then another time he said, um, where are you? Which is <laughs> <laughs> That's a drunk DM if I've ever seen one. Are you where sure are that wasn't where is you? <laughs> Look into that quickly. <laughs> Dish! Dish it! Dish! <laughs> oh, this horse stinks. <laughs> oh, my God. She's a dime a dozen. <laughs> you, don't, you don't find her to be very attractive. Oh, she, no, my God, no. <laughs> Plus, when you take those panties off, it just gets very boring. <laughs> what are you going to do? Put stuff in it? Who cares? <laughs> 
rather see I'd rather see LeBron's dick if you know what I mean. I do. I do know what you mean. It's easy to know what you mean. Oh, you dish it then. Dish it again. Double dish. Dish dish. Slap it. So, what else you got? Hasselhoff's coming in in a new car. It's Knight Rider's son. Oh my God. Wait, well, go back to the other shot that we had there. What the fuck is she doing here? Camouflage in her face? That's so when you don't want you don't want the guy to know who it is blowing them. You put that on your face. It's called it's called, it's called the portable glory hole. Dish it. <laughs> <laughs> Drive a door to door glory. A, that's when you want to blow guys at a party. <laughs> oh my god, she is fucking insane. <laughs> oh, she is. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, 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 oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I know a Venezuelan girl paid a hundred thousand for an ass like that. No. <laughs> Had to put pig juice in her butt. <laughs> Got infected. Half of it fell off. Dish, dish it. Dish. 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 <laughs> Another dish, please. Another dish. Time for the dishwasher. <laughs> <We're> gonna... <laughs> <laughs> what else you got, sloppy? <laughs> dish, dish. So Ethan Kukowski, Who? he's from uh, the show Shameless. How does this guy Carl. make dish? <laughs> <laughs> He plays Carl in Shameless. Wow, he's great. <laughs> <laughs> great ass. Well, he got arrested for DUI charges. Um, Is he old enough to drive? He's 18. <laughs> wow. <Damn>. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Kevin Spacey just bailed him out. <laughs> oh, I'd, carry, I'd carry him to the couch. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> me, me and Kevin are going to do, do our Boy Scout barbecue party. It's annual. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to make it. We're gonna have to make it twice a year now. Where is he from? Oh my God! Shameless, shameless, shameless. Oh, mm. <laughs> perfect show name. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. What was he driving? A Honda Civic. What is he in? <laughs> Talk to me. Head. Tell me what, what kind of tax bracket is this little bitch in? <laughs> I <laughs> don't. You, I fuck a series regular and up, baby. <laughs> I don't want any fucking day players. What's he doing? Dish it. Dish. I gotta be with a series series regular. <laughs> he was driving his orange BMW. Ooh, I'm almost in. Let's talk. E series. What is it? <laughs> At around 1030, and he, I guess, straddled the traffic lanes. Which... <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> what are you going to do? You're bored in traffic? Get out and straddle something. <laughs> Put on one of those fucking portable glory hole masks and have some fun. <laughs> which caused the cops to pull him over, mm -hmm. and he you know, went through a sobriety test, did poorly, so the cops arrested him on the spot. <sighs> wow. <laughs> Well, you saved the best for last, didn't you, you trollop? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> filter these, baby. Listen. <laughs> what else you got? Is that it? Look, That's the, he's yep. so young, his teeth haven't even formed yet. That's right. still coming he in. He those, like, rounded baby teeth. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You can still see through those suckers. <laughs> <laughs> you could read a paper yeah. that was in the back of his yeah. mouth. Yeah, that's that's my rule. If you can see through his front teeth, don't sleep with them. <laughs> don't. Don't don't grope them. Make sure those teeth are solid. Dish. <laughs> That's the funniest shit ever. That's a rule of thumb. Oh I call God. it the rule of bum. Listen. <laughs> All right. Well, listen. This has been a fantastic dish session. I can't wait to do it again. I hope the fans appreciate it because we. My mic went off. You motherfucker. Watch your thumbs. How dare you shut my mic off? This is the dish section of the show. I'm the fucking dish, and you fucking shut my mic off. Well, you're jealous because I didn't give you compliments on your fucking wavy locks, you cocksucker. Well, condition them, and maybe I will. Dish it. Dishes. See you guys next time Robert, on the dish. Robert Kelly, unbelievable. <laughs> I love you guys. So funny. I'll see you guys. Right. See you soon. All right, take care, guys. Do your outro. The Let's <laughs> Dish segment is brought to you by Dish. Dish listens when no one else does. Dish tuned in to you. To learn more and sign up today, call 1-844-CALL-DISH. Go to dish.com or visit a local retailer near you. Oh, my God. That's the funniest <laughs> shit I've ever heard. My stomach hurts. <laughs> My stomach actually hurts. No one does the old-fashioned 
stereotype like that anymore. Holy shit. And it is so funny. It looks like the funnest thing in the world to be. <laughs> Doesn't it? Like if that was your real personality, every day would be fun. <laughs> oh my God. I, hate, I, mean, I feel bad for Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> Who's doing next week? Jim Carrey? Who do we have know, coming in? God. Steve Harvey? <laughs> God damn, that was hilarious. <laughs> All right, we do have uh, Lisa Traeger coming up pretty soon. Yes, we do. Should we uh, stay on for a couple more minutes and then break? Or Yeah, let's stay on for a little more. Than, than I'm break. talking to the Vito. He's in he, this he's... room now. This is his thing. <laughs> this is Vito's thing. What are you guys texting back and forth about? I'm not I'm not texting Chris. I'm texting somebody else. Oh. I'm oh. texting Just like Paul. a friend. Oh, oh, to tell him that Bob, yeah, to, Bobby's to let done? him know that Bobby's done and ask if, if, if Bobby was leaving right now. God damn, that was hilarious, man. <laughs> he might be the funniest human on the planet. Oh, that was insane. <laughs> I feel like lightheaded from laughing too I know. Much. <laughs> if you know what I mean. If you know, He's real blood. funny and he makes me laugh if you know what I mean. <laughs> Dish! Dish it! Dish it! <laughs> I wonder, do you think Fez would find that funny or... Or accurate. Or not funny <laughs> or like too stereotyped. Because that's still, that's still hilarious stuff. It's so funny. God, that was hilarious. He also, he he does that so well. Yeah, it comes to him too I mean, easy, if you know what I mean. If I, you know what I mean. Comes. <laughs> like right. semen. Got it. Yes. Dish it. If I can see through his teeth, then I'm not going to be God, that was too much. If I can <laughs> see through his teeth. <laughs> that should be sh the shit that you're doing every week. That's the, <laughs> that's the angle you're going to take. <laughs> Dish it! Dish! He's so fucking funny. Yeah, that was genius. Holy shit. Oh, you know, he's doing something. Uh, he's doing his podcast for the New York Comedy Festival. You know he's, what, dude? Yeah, and he's going to be at that new place. What are you pointing at? I need Jen to take over the board for me for a second. What is going on? The public hotel. What's going on with you? I, I just need Jen to take over. I need to run out and do something really quickly. You have to shit? No. You, <laughs> this test? better be not be shit related. What do you have not to do? Well, I what's just... it the two of you abandoning us? <clears throat> Don't stop. I'm gonna be, it's going to take two minutes. I just have to do something. Nobody Poop. wants you back. Once you're out, you're out. Come on over, Jen. Poop. We all know what it is. Do you know what he's doing? I'm not 100% sure. He'll, he'll have him pop in and talk to me real quick. No, he's got to go. Doo doo? <laughs> It does look like he's running to the bathroom. Jeez. I mean, we have a couple minutes. He couldn't and then go shat until your heart's content. Dish! Dish it. <clears throat> By the way, I'd much rather do that, just drop in and kill, than have my own show. I need to. <laughs> <laughs> just do it. Caroline says... Uh, all right, why don't we... Um... Plug tomorrow, Chris, or plug Friday. Of coming up Friday at two p.m. is the Eliza Eliza, excuse me, oh Schlesinger God. unmasked. I made a mistake. <laughs> I made a mistake. I got it. You just called her a loser. <laughs> you know her name isn't Laser, right? Yes, Eliza Schlesinger. That unmasked at two p.m. this coming up Friday. Oh my God! Did you find out what he's up to? He has stomach problems. He just didn't want to stay on the air. Why isn't he shit in a bucket? I don't know. Then I don't want him back in here. Yeah. I'm, after he has to take a massive shit. I'm like, he's in here for one day. He can't make one show without. I'm very regular. I just, I go in the morning. Are you I'm telling done. the truth that he said that to you? Why wouldn't he say it to us? I don't know. It's, it's very strange. It's very weird. Hey, what are you wearing around your neck? What is this? Like a fucking Mayan thing? This is a, a Hamsa, mm -hmm. which is, um, I think uh, Jewish people use them, and Muslims, I think, also use them. Well, I thought they were like, against each other here. Yeah, but I think they're all both into the Hamsa, which is like the hand of God. It's like a protection. I'm going to say give me Hamsa every time I'm hanging around <laughs> Jews and Muslims. I need one of those. Every time I'm with Jews and Muslims, I'm, I'm always like this. All right, mm -hmm. you're both right, okay? <laughs> Settle down. <laughs> Settle down. I'm not sure why they both are into it because there's very I little. I never that saw they... a Jewish person with that before. 
They definitely, the Jews definitely use it. What Jews? It's like Arabic and Jewish, both. Like Sephardic Jews or like my people, Ashkenazi? I don't know, Chris. I think both. Both Ashkenazi and Sephardic. Because in the Ashkenazi community, I've never seen a giant. <laughs> the mouth that we say Ashkenazi on this show. It's like I never even it. heard the word. And now I we just say said it. Jew. And now we say it like five times a week. I'm dying for some humantashen. What's that? I believe it's a cake that was sent to us by Larry. And you Giannis. believe it is, but you don't know for a fact. It is 100%. Then why would you say I believe? <laughs> Mm-mm-mm-mm. That was so fucking great. All right, let's um, let's break right now. Lisa Traeger is going to be here, and man, does she have an act to follow? I'm concerned now. I know it's not easy. <clears throat> Ring's mission is to make neighborhoods safer. Today, over a million people use the amazing Ring video doorbell to help protect their homes. Ring knows home security begins at the front door, but it doesn't end there. So now they're extending that same level of security to the rest of your home with the Ring floodlight cam. Just like Ring's amazing doorbell, floodlight cam is a motion activated camera and floodlight that connects right to your phone with HD video and two way audio that lets you know the moment anyone steps on your property see and speak to visitors even set off an alarm right from your phone with rings floodlight cam when things go bump in the night you'll immediately know what it is whether you're home or away the ring floodlight cam lets you keep an eye on on your home from anywhere. Ring Floodlight offers the ultimate in home security with high visibility floodlights and a powerful HD camera that puts security in your hands. With Ring, you're always home. Save up to $150 off a Ring of Security kit when you go to ring.com slash comedy. Ring.com slash comedy. That's ring.com slash comedy. Bennington is back and we've got Lisa Traeger in studio. Yay! Yay! She's hosting the Sex in the City Trivia Night this Sunday, November what? 12th at 7.30 p.m. Uh, at Littlefield in New York City uh, featuring guest comedians, prizes, and viewings of episodes littlefieldnyc.com for tickets and, of course, on Twitter and Instagram at Glitter Cheese. You're a big yes. Sex in the fi- City person? Yeah, love it. I always watch it a lot. And I used to, I go to Simpsons trivia sometimes. Yeah. And all the Sex in the City trivia is too easy online. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. And it's also, we're going to raise money for Puerto Rico. So nice. all, that's right. where all the money will go. And then um, the, there's some great prizes. Yeah. I have like, uh, yeah, some good stuff to win. So bring your teams. <laughs> And get ready to get tested. I'm making PowerPoints. I've been watching the whole show so insa- intensely. I did not. I never figured you for a fan of that. I never know oh, with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's such great television. And now just the structure of it all. It's so funny. It's so great. And there's such good actresses. It's been like a pleasure to watch so intensely. I feel I always feel weird because girls my age have like all watch it and know it. And I don't. And then they'll be like, oh, my God, you're such a Samantha. And I'm like, what is that? It's so funny. I mean, there's like fun stuff and it's really um, it's a show about friendship and emotions. And I like it. I mean, there's some like things where you look back and you're like, Samantha, stop saying tranny so much. Right. um, You (laughs) know, Samantha dates a black guy. And, you know, it's like (laughs) not even that, but like the things that are said. She's just like like, fetishizing it. Like for sure. Yeah. Mm. Big dick. Right, ladies. (laughs) Or she's a sex columnist in the bisexual episode. She's like, what do you mean? You know, there's some things right. that are like so funny, but it was so ahead of its time and like so cool. And they all look so good. And I've seen Sarah Jessica Parker in the last month, once on a street and one at a party. And so it's like I'm manifesting all these. Wait, things. you were at a party? Yes. Oh, like I've seen her on the street. That's nothing. <laughs> but to be at the same party, yeah. was her husband with her? Um, No, but on the street he was. They yeah. were like exiting a play with some other actor. But this was Amy Sedaris's TV show premiere. Oh, the at home with Amy nice. and their best friends. So great. Yeah. And I didn't so, know that. They're best friends with Andy Cohn. They always hang out. And uh, you know what? Did, did, I'm going to tell you an Andy Cohn story that happened five okay. minutes oh, ago. Okay. Oh, my God. Great. I go into the men's room and Andy was in the first stall. Mm hmm. Not the first stall, but the first journal, and leans back and just smiles at me as I'm coming in, like a friendly <laughs> smile. And I go, I've never had this happen before <laughs> in a bathroom, and we're not even that nice to each other in the halls. Yeah, but that was, kinda, very, that was very, that was that's warm. Mm, hi. Like I came to his house for a party. It was very nice. <laughs> so you see him around here all the time? Yes. 
So, how many people that do shows around you are you friends with versus acquaintances? Very, versus very, ignore? very rare. Everybody's in their own world. So everyone's ignoring each other. Hoda, Hoda gives is. a wave always. Wave, but she's never, never a conversation. No, just always like, like hi. And then, like, that's the most it is, yeah. usually. But, but you would think so everybody would be together here, but we're not. Okay. Because yeah. everybody's doing their own thing. But you know, do you have a, a, a radio show that's your best friend? Uh, I would say Nick DiPaolo is our best friend. Yeah. Okay. And uh, obviously Jim and Sam are mm -hmm. our best friends. And Bonfire. Bonfire are our best friends. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of best friends. Okay, I, right. But you more have a tendency to share this studio than see you in the hall. Yeah, so you're never all here at the same time. Yeah, sometimes we're here at the same time. All those shows are around, but we just never, you know. As Sandra always yes, waves Yes, we always to us. like give a wave to Sandra. Yeah, from Sandyland. Have you done her show yet? No. You would be. But I, uh, I'm a fan of hers. Yeah, yeah, I think that She's you guys cool. would really hit it off. I saw her live in Chicago a while ago, like maybe four or five years ago. Yeah. And uh, there's like a band behind her. She's yes. telling stories. It's funny. Such good jokes. And she's singing. I mean, it's like the best. She's very so hip cool. and very classy. I've seen that show too. I love her singing, like her as a performer. I think she's just she like kills so... it, man. Man, when I was a kid, she had a video for that song that she did that was like, it's like man, it's it was just like uh, Jesus Christ Superstar mixed with Manic Depression. So it's like oh, Manic yeah, yeah. Superstar or something. Yes, that's the name of it, Manic Superstar. And Find it on YouTube. <laughs> I was a kid and was just like, I want to be her. I want to be friends with her. I just yeah. thought she was the coolest right, fucking let's, thing. Let's just play a minute of it. Yeah, I've never seen this in my life. <laughs> Is it great? Yeah. I used to order it on the box. So it's like, that was like that channel that you could like, it was like a jukebox for yeah. music videos and you would call in and then like for like 25 cents or something, you could order a music video and then they would play it like as requested by Gail. That was Is, the first time I saw Pink was on the box. Is that right? Really? There you go. That's yeah. how long Pink has been around. People don't <laughs> yeah. even realize that. All right, do me a favor. Sandra Bernard, her cover of Mighty Real, when she slows it down. I think she's one of the last hip people yeah, she's super on the cool. planet. Like People yes. used to go out of their way to be cool, but no one does anymore. She's a cool one. I think she does a Christmas show at Joe's Pub every year. We should go to yeah, it Yeah, I would year. love to see that. Chris, check and see if she does that, if I'm not wrong about that. She does. I, I wonder if she does, because I, just, I worked with her for a few months. I don't know. She's like really got around. I like know. From she gave me a Christmas present. <laughs> what she what was it? She gave me a Mets t-shirt and a pack of cards, baseball cards from the year I was born. That is oh so Oh my cool. God. Sweet. It was it's one of so the personal. nicest presents anybody's ever given me. That's nice. What did I give you last year? <laughs> you gave me a Conan, uh, a Conan bobblehead. No, oh, that's great. And Gail gave me a Conan, a Conan nightlight. Yeah, yeah. Conan really. <laughs> he likes Mets Conan. Mets and Conan. I mean, we all know you. He's going to Conan tonight. He's no, that's what's fan. so funny. That happened a lot as a kid where you liked one thing and then that's all you would get. Right. Oh, yeah. Like I liked, I had a Tweety Bird moment. I got a lot of owls, but it's like when you're known for, you know, I have a yeah. friend who always gets pigs. Right. Yeah. My thing is everybody would always give me Coke or little razors and, <laughs> and I'm like, I can't. What am I going to do with Oh, my all? God. <laughs> Another <laughs> with it all. Another handheld mirror? What am I going to do with it? Mm. Oh, you love anybody. cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> I never liked it. I think it's because I already talk a lot or something. It yeah. just never. Like, see, that could no settle crazy. you. Some people get settled and they get. I just get. I get a weird feeling in yeah. my throat, and then I'm like, "Oh, great, I'm up." I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you like to sleep. I don't. I like to stay up late, but I want to be. I don't know. Right. I just not don't need it. Up. I w I like a lot of different drugs, but like, that what, one's what's your, never. What's your drug of choice? I mean, I smoke weed a lot and the yeah. most, but I love Molly. I think it's awesome. the thing. Yeah. I've had such good experiences on Molly. Some not as good, but like one that was so revolutionary to my life. It's like my favorite feeling. Wow. That and I have a bunch at my house uh, yeah. that I haven't done in a while. I bought a bunch for my 30th birthday in August. I rented a house in Palm Springs, Labor Day weekend. Sweet. And I don't know. None of us did any. 
I don't know if we're old, but I have all this Molly. <laughs> and no one to share it with. No, we all went to bed before noon. I mean, before midnight. Chris, does Molly get bad or can you keep it for... Oh, I've had some Molly laying around for a long time and then I ate it. And still, it might get not as strong as it originally was, but yeah. it'll still get you. It'll, it'll still roll. I'm down to share. Like, I, I like to... If I, I feel like a couple needs Molly. I like yeah. to give people a couple's Molly sometimes. <laughs> I forgot the last time we saw you said you were very much in love, maybe for the first time, no? Yes. No, I, I still am. I was kind of broken up with, but uh, I'm optimistic long term. But it's like, a, yeah, it sucks right now. For oh, sure. okay. But it's over? Or? It's not, I mean, I'd like to see her We're again. We're taking a break. We're taking a break. Yeah, it's not my choice. I mean, she's like stressed out and scared and it is long distance and she has a lot on her plate. I don't know. Is it's she- a lot of confusing messages. It's a lot of like. Yeah. Oh, I can't do this. I can't be in a relationship. But please, can we talk? And I because, miss you. <laughs> because you guys can't live the same place, or that's not a that's possibility? A bit, that's like the number one thing is she's really stressed that we're probably not going to live in the same country for a few years. And I'm just like, whatever. Who cares? Right. Um, you but, don't, yeah, you're okay with that because you're a comic. So she, yeah, yeah she's um, like on tour and doing things. Um, she's just more, I feel like I'm chill. Right. And she's like uh, stressed. Anxiety. Right. <laughs> Panicked. I'm pressure. Just, She's like, I feel pressure. I'm like, truly just my love. No pressure. But, I'm really thinking that the smartest thing you could do is live in different cities. I think so, too. I yeah. think it's because we're both obsessive kind of people as well. Mm-hmm. So I think it's uh, nice. But... Um, she's shooting her pilot. I don't know. I'm like, just call me in a few weeks because mm. she wanted to still message and it wasn't making me feel that good. So I was like, well, she's doing a pilot. Let's at least see if it gets picked up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm <laughs> like, I think it'll be here. I'm like, I don't know. I just, um, she's scared of a lot of things and mm. I still like her. I'd like to see her, um, you know, fucking stuff. That's what's hard is like, <laughs> if you break up and you live in the same city, you'll maybe see each other again. You right. Make out like this was like, it's just so. It feels more final. No, even it's just like, can we just, no pressure, no strings attached, meet up yeah. for a week somewhere? Jesus. Yeah. I don't know. What's wrong with that? I want to be like, I'm a Jew. Fuck me on Christmas. Like, yes. <laughs> the industry's dead. We day. have nothing to do. Yeah. Um, wh- yeah. Let's just, so that's my It is my funny goal. how much time we're forced to take off at Christmas every year. Like, yeah. it's been radio. They're going like, I don't care what happens the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Do whatever you guys They're want. They're like, do. pretty much December and August. They're like, just don't be around. We don't care. <laughs> but any other time, it's very important that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> you're not taking Arbor Day off. I've never spent an Arbor Day with my family. It's sad. I just want to That's really see that. sad. And that's when you want to be with family. Yeah, I mean my outside family, the secret family <laughs> Wait, that what? I keep. You know. I, I got a couple families. I didn't know that. That's the craziest. To have a separate family? To have second family. That's, uh, that's wild. Yeah. I feel like, you know, like criminals, and then that's the next level. Well, the second family thing, I think the only time you're happy is driving in between the two families. Like, you just need <laughs> like, fucking oh, 10 break. minutes without No, I everybody. bet you get off on, like, manipulating and lying, and you get a rush. Well, I think Maybe. Like a family that. boner? Like, yeah. That's not cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, just thinking about the family you're ignoring. There's got to right. be some sort of pleasure in that. Well, what you try to do is have a vacation at the same time with two separate hotel rooms, and you're running back and forth, and then it's like a farce, like a TV farce. <laughs> when my, my friend was dating his husband, we... Me and some of my other friends, we thought that his boyfriend at the time had a secret family, like a straight family. Right. Because we would, we saw, I saw this guy and he was walking around the neighborhood and he was with, kissed a woman and he had a small child with him. And we kept seeing him and we're like, dude, he has a secret family. Like, how do we tell him? And then it turned out he just had a doppelganger, but they really, really look alike. I still, like even, <laughs> I still think the doppelganger just threw And we off. were like, we would see, be like, secret family? He but, has a secret family. But you know, like up until the 80s, most gay guys were married with a family. Yeah. Because they were just like, I got it. People were asking too many questions. Yeah, but they didn't have a separate secret family. I just yeah. feel that fucks up a kid. When you find out like your uh, parent has, like your dad has a family he likes more. Yeah, you got to say you're more. the secret one. One of them's going to be the light. Right. One's going to be the more Once public. it's found out. The dad's going to pick one, right? I don't know how it works. I think it fucks with the kids a lot. You want to at least people, know that you're number one family. The people I know with secret surprise families are fucked. Mentally just psychopaths. Oh, I'd say most people are fucked psychopaths. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I guess a particular psychopath that I don't want to be around. Right. <laughs> are these people that... 
Uh, by the way, I forgot this. Mateo told us a story about you when you were a little girl. Yeah. <laughs> and you were heading home to see new kids. Oh, Backstreet Boys. Backstreet Boys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was TRL. It was like a premiere of the music video. I think it was more than that or the one or something. And I ran home to get the premiere of it and I didn't have my keys. So I broke uh, the door, <laughs> like the handle and the wood around it. And I just knocked in through the back door. And then my parents, yeah, I'd be like, I don't know. <laughs> and then he said that you were watching this show just crying. You were so. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I cried at a lot of Backstreet Boys concerts. Uh, I was obsessed. I was like a psycho with like, you know, pictures from ceiling to floor. Yeah. The Backstreet Boys. Who's all in Backstreet? Nick what? Carter is my number one. Still. Then now, and then no. AJ McLean was number two. He's the bad boy. Yeah. And then Brian has the voice of an angel. Mm. Kevin's an old man with eyebrows. And then Howie <laughs> D is like <laughs> ponytail gelled, high voice. No yeah. one, you know. I went bowling with him for lupus. Yeah. Um, and I have a pair of his autographed bowling shoes still at my parents' house. All right. So wait, what's the one with? Who's like the old man thing? with eyebrows? I just want to know which one is the old man with eyebrows. <laughs> the one? What do you this mean? One? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so he's much older than the other. Yeah. So like Nick, when he joined, the blonde one was like 15 years old. Yeah. And Kevin was 27 or like 24, something insane. Oh my god. He's yeah. like a lot older than them. And then Howie D's the second oldest. Who is voice of an angel? Uh, Brian, the alien-looking fucker in the middle. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and he, he is, loves. He's Jesus. got the great voice. Yeah. Um, yeah, because he had heart problems when he was a baby, right. and so he loves God and, you know, okay, great gotcha. voice. So he does gospel albums now. Now, were you... I know so much. He met his wife on the set of As Long As You Love Me music video. Wow. <laughs> now, I'm like a psychopath. Do you... Were you strictly backstreet? How did you feel about NSYNC? Yeah, I, like, competed. Like, I denied thinking NSYNC was good. Right. Even though the song... Like, Tearing Up My Heart is so fun. It's a good song. But I would, like, fight and argue, and then now as an adult, yeah. it's like they were all just teen millionaires fucking everyone, probably friends, and doing you know just having fun together there was no war i bet no but no it was like the, there was. the thing is they had more in common than anyone else that liked yeah. that. right you know i mean they're like the only ones who knew what it was like to everybody but he's screaming for right. them. These, the thing is, like, Backstreet's more even. Like, this, it's four uglies. I mean, even <laughs> Justin's ugly. He just grew up to be hot. But, like, this is a yeah. weirder group of men, I feel. I mean, Justin I guess... would have nothing. He never would have been a single if he didn't date Britney. That was his no, the whole new thing. That album, the Justified album, was great. I yeah, think but I'm like... saying that uh, he only got that because he dated Britney and there was a new sense of confidence in him. Because he never even talked in these days. He was like, well, Vito, I'll put it in a way that you can understand. I don't it. believe it because he was on um, Star Search and Mickey Mouse Club before <laughs> Britney. He's always had it in him. I, I, we're going to go back and look at this. But it's almost <laughs> like, did you ever see when the Rockers were together? Yeah. He never talked at all. Yeah, Janetti was like the Janetti was, was the, the guy. Yeah. I don't know who you're talking about. Well, we're talking <laughs> wrestling right now. I got oh, okay. to put Vito into it. And... Uh, See, I always liked, um, who's the gay one? Lance, Lance. Bass. Yeah, Lance yeah, was I very like popular. Him. Yeah. It took him a while to come out, right? And then when he did, mm -hmm. he was an icon. Yeah. He's friends with Lisa Vanderpump. It's a good life. And The but, thing with these boy bands, my theory, it's like, they're really like safe romantic fantasies for tween girls. It's yes. nice. Right. Like, I don't know, you know, it was just like, boys will sing to you. It's like a nice tool in the world. Yeah, like how they say young girls get into horses. You yeah, know, it's like repressed <laughs> yeah. sexuality. Right. Yeah, we like, got the it's boy like band. Big, yeah, <laughs> nice boys. This kid, Sal Vancano, he's doing stand up now. <laughs> he's doing great. Um, now these two, I don't understand as heartthrobs at all. Fatone? No, that's yeah, what I'm Fatone is below. Oh, but Joey is so funny. When the yeah. One Direction broke up, he did a really funny PSA video for them going, guys, what are you doing? I'm the second most successful in sinker. My life's awful. I'm doing <laughs> diarrhea medication commercials. <laughs> Stay together, kids. Um, so it was really funny. I think he has a nice sense of humor. <laughs> and the fact that he called himself, instead of Fatone, Fat One, <laughs> yeah. I think was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he had a funny wedding with like carnival stuff. I don't know. I'm, yeah, very... Into pop. I like the Spice Girls too. Before that, I just yeah. get obsessed with stuff, and that's why I can do the Sex in the City trivia. Well, I don't like anything casually. I'm like all in, a hundred percent. That's an addictive Always. person. Not only, and that's the only kind of personality to have, in my opinion. Who is uh, who was your favorite Spice Girl? Uh, Ginger. Yeah, I was a big Ginger fan. Ginger, of course.
I was my, my girl, my the girl that broke my heart. No, she yeah. said something funny. She's like, it's um wild. You can tell who has a sense of humor or, or not just by looking at them. She's like, you could tell Posh is funny and sports sporty isn't. Yeah. And I'm like, that's such a good point. Sporty is way too serious. Sporty yeah. is not funny, but you could just tell by looking at them, and you just get their essence. I like, I like knowing that. Sporty looks like she's going to look at one of the other girls and yell, "I thought you loved me." <laughs> <laughs> Chill. But this turned out to be the real psycho, right? Scary? I don't know if she's a psycho. Well, I had a Spice Girls birthday party in fifth grade, yeah. and I had four friends, and I couldn't be Ginger because Aaron, our friend, had red hair. Mm. And I had to be Scary Spice, and my <laughs> sister made, like, horns and stuff for me. She's just bi and fun and muscular, I think. I thought she was always in crazy breakups where she... Yeah, she's just, she like, killed fucking the dog or so, and fun. Something. But she's I'm, making money. I, I always know. thought Baby was weird. Yeah. Something just off about There's it. There's like a pedophile fantasy to being like, well, yeah. I'm a little girl, but I like her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sucking my thumb. Yeah. <laughs> but I have a baba. Did you go to Limited 2 and buy the Spice Girl lollipops? I did go to Limited 2, but I don't think I remember Spice they Girl. They were fucking delicious. Man. They were so good. They were the like, and you got stickers or something. Man, but they I were remember the because I can kind of remember the sticker. Oh yeah, were there were so faces good. were printed on them. Yeah. yeah, they were like the most delicious <laughs> lollipops. There are these Mickey Mouse lollipops that were good too. I can't find what flavor were these. I don't know, just like delicious just white, gel- <laughs> just like a white flavor, not even vanilla. <laughs> I don't know. Juicy is not the right word, but they were full of flavor, and I liked them so much. <laughs> Juicy is not a word. <laughs> not the right word. L- Lisa Traeger's in studio with us. She's hosting Sex in the City Trivia Night this Sunday, November 12th at 7.30 at Littlefield in New York City. Uh, and it's benefit for Puerto Rico, so check it out, littlefieldnyc.com for tickets. It's good you're doing this since America decided not to help. I mean, yeah. it's really crazy. Yeah. Um, and I'm part of the problem for sure, but it's crazy how many things that are so atrocious that are like, well, next. It's like right. so wild. I know. To it's just let much. a thousand people like close to a thousand people die in Puerto Rico and not help them. And we just keep living. It's so weird. Well, you know, the news wanted to report that he tweeted something instead <laughs> of this thing where and it, it, people actually do this. And remember, they're Americans. And you're just like, you don't even have to say that. Yes, even They're, if they weren't, it yes. still would be really upsetting. We still don't want to let people die in the no, heat. The news is so weird. Um, I'm, I just joined the gym since I've yeah. been heartbroken. And uh, like the news is just the same three story. I don't know. It's the weirdest it's top thing 40 to radio. Like, watch. They find out what plays the most and they play it over and over and yeah. over That's until crazy. you burn out and then you add something new. Well, it's crazy that movie Network, was that what it yes. came mm-hmm. out, what, 30 years ago? Probably 40. 40. Yeah. And we're... It, that's when they thought it was bad, and now we're in this yeah. nightmare. I don't know. We were crazy. like in in the seventies. Was like you're right. There's a half an hour a night. That's just nuts. And now it's turned into twenty four hours a day on four different channels. And if you watch when we have a, a big tragedy, a mass shooting, you see that like they're good at it now. There's a yeah. formula. There's like go to the okay now we've got information on the victim's family now go replay the footage of the outside whatever now let's show the it's just like the it's it's a formula that has been yeah. perfected since I would say um, the Columbine shooting where it's Columbine just like, was like what do we do how do we how do we cover we, something like what that? do we yeah. do right what do we do wrong next time let's make it better guys but they immediately all the anchors are flying well we're trying to see what shooting. color this person is. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. It's right. like, hope it's not a brown person. And then yeah. it's like, how are we th- even thinking like this? It's so insane. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're crazy. And also, you don't have the same level of shock you used to. You're just like, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's it. hard it's to stay as upset for every single one because now it just like, well, the problem seems over you. so overwhelming and giant. And so many people seem blind to it. But it's like, Money in these like companies and these few billionaires are running the show, yeah. and we're just like these pawn. Like I don't, I just don't understand how this is happening. I saw one tweet that I really liked that was like, um, in the Congress buildings, guns aren't allowed, and they're all in Obamacare. If you want to know what they really feel, yeah, and it's like, yeah, I just don't know how all these. I don't know. It just seems like so overwhelmingly huge and crazy yeah. and deep. Everything's crazy in this country right now, except but, for Chris Stanley's hair. But this that's, guy, the that's the only constant we have. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, come on. Mm-mm. Is this a conscious choice? No, my hair does whatever it wants. But so, not getting but, a haircut, I mean. Oh, no, yeah, I'm not getting a haircut, no. You're over it. I, well, I didn't cut my hair for seven years. Eventually I will, but I'm going to grow out a little bit. 
All right, fun. Did you guys dress up for Halloween? No. No, no I actually didn't. I okay. usually do. I'm I didn't either. Really not into cosplay. <laughs> um, <laughs> or like maybe we're just really into it and that's like amateur night. We're oh, like, we live yeah. the dream. Do you? <laughs> cosplay yeah. 24 7. No, I've never done But that's that. what theater kids at your old high school used to say, right? I dress up every day. I don't have to dress up. <laughs> <at all>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, I thought I would have thought of you as the dress up type. I fucked up and I, I forgot to order my, my Kuji sweater to make my Biggie costume and it just. It was a disaster, and I was really upset. Yeah, I this. saw you looking for that, and I, I actually thought he was dressing up as Cosby because the no. sweater was very similar. And I was like, dude, are you dressing as Cosby? Were you going to like, blackface? Is that where you were no. going with this? Because I'm glad you didn't. I wasn't going to blackface. It never works. I was just going to wear a crown with glasses, a thick gold rope chain, and a Coogee sweater, and I was going to say I was Biggie. It would have been a good costume. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Lisa Traeger sitting in with us. The last time I saw her, I thought it was one of the most exciting sets I've ever seen uh, anyone do <laughs> in stand up. You were whipping that room into uh, a crazy frenzy. Have you been building on that? It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I was working on that for a while and now I'm uh, working on new. I don't know. I just need to get yeah. back on the road and do hours and that's coming up soon. Is that coming up soon, huh? Yeah. I'm going on the road like in a couple of weeks and that'll be nice to stretch out and. Do like eight hours. Forget that you were ever in love. You get out on the road, it just doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> no, I already am doing jokes about like getting broken up with and stuff. Yeah. But um, I'm also like, I'm open to new possibilities. I'm not like being delusional about something, but yeah. I don't want to give up on it. And I'm also like, if I see it being long term, there's you, no point of not being here's patient. The thing. When Vito got broke up with, you haven't rebounded yet, right? And how long has it been? That was like two years ago. Two years ago, and he hasn't dated since. Yeah, I and he refuses. Day. Oh no, I'm gonna try to fuck a couple. I think that's like uh, <laughs> my goal because yeah. everyone. Yeah, I think that's what I have to do. I just can't imagine like liking someone. I just like this other person so much. Yeah, but I feel a couple but, would be a f good time, right? Because you know <laughs> it's just gonna be like a one time thing. Yeah, but it's also like I'll be. I don't have to like. Be, <laughs> I don't know. You know that you won't be a full time. I don't have to get like situation. into it, but I it will be. But it's like they have a thing, right? right. And that takes the pressure off you. And plus, I just want to do it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like <laughs> making excuses and reasons. Yeah, but I think that's the goal. And then that way too, they're like, no. We want you. To, we want to pay for the vacation. <laughs> you know, because the couple is like, let's really not lose her. You know, I know someone who his friend got in. Uh, this is another gay story. So his friend <laughs> got, uh, the, as he put it, they sent for him, and the, basically they were a very rich couple. They met when they were traveling to New York, mm -hmm. and then they were like, "We'll pay for your flight. We'll yeah. take care of you." Come stay here. We have a guest house. You don't even have to stay in the house. Like, come in. Like, and he was like, this feels a little bit like a business opportunity in yeah. some ways. But they are very wealthy. And he was like, I think I'm going to take it. Like, I think Good I'm going to take this. So he, I, I don't know how long he was out there, but everything, all expenses they eventually paid. Killed and <laughs> all expenses <laughs> paid. And he was very well taken care of. And he was like, this is kind of a, an ideal situation. Yeah, I just found out about someone that um, does financial domination mm. for a living, and it's like some, um, it's like a, f a whatever. Um, but there's forums and stuff, and these girls just write like, "I need to get my nails done," and like men fight over who pays for it. Wait, and uh, these dudes, this? they get nothing. They don't have to meet these people. They're not fucking these people. These men just get off on like buying and providing for hot girls. And so the girls, um, and they just want to see photos of them enjoying the things. So she gets sent on four star, five star vacations, like hotel, everything. She goes with her boyfriend and just sends photos and these dudes just get off uh, paying for things. Wow. There's and it's a, these women's business and yeah. it's so cool. The porn site I like, they have like a, t um, a kink university section. Yeah. And they have like a how to do this. I haven't watched the video. What's the porn site? Kink.com. But they have one that it's like explains different fetishes if you want to try them. Um, yeah, yeah, let's take a look because I want to know. I've, I, I love to hear about anyone's fetish. I love yeah, when anyone fun. is so specific yeah. with what they're into. <laughs> yeah. I'm always like, wow. Now, was that just pop in your head one day? Did you see something when you were a little kid? Because I yeah. don't think you should even fight it unless it's something that's hurting you. Like yeah, a lot of people are like, I, I want to get out of that. And I'm like, why? That's your thing. 
I always just, don't go on that. <laughs> That's so poor. I did Bobby Kelly's podcast and we got yeah. into porn chats and we put up the, his site that he likes and, we, and then the YouTube shut down the oh, God. podcast because it broke all the rules. Oh, Because we're, yeah. we're just looking at a porn site. Right, right. we're just staring at it. <laughs> but I'd like to see a list of kinks. You know, well, I just kinks. read in a gossip magazine or maybe online that, you know, Idris Alba and Kate Winslet were filming that mountain snow movie. Yeah. And they have love scenes. And he asked her to keep sock, her socks on. And she thought it was because he didn't like feet, but he just likes them so much. She loved socks. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. I know someone who likes said they like like men's socks on women like not just like, oh, like thigh high socks, like sexy socks. Like right. some guys like like dudes. Like athletic socks, he right. finds sexy on women, and he knew that it was related to. He remembered that when he was young, his brother's girlfriend came over, and she slept at the house, and then she used his brother's sock. Like he can remember, right? And then seeing her, and it was just like you know his brother's teenage girlfriend. Good, I he think was that, young, and he was like, yeah. "Whoa, that's something is very erotic about that." There's a lot of things that I think of as sexy, and are all based on. Either my sister's friends or my brother's uh, girlfriends. Yeah. From early And I age. think that that happens. Like you're yeah. like, that's you're informing your sexuality. And Even then if before you, have older, you know what sexuality right, is. Right. And older brothers and sisters are having more advanced sexuality. And then you're like, wait a second. These like women are around and they're like interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. I remember because my sister was like 11 years older than me. And all of her friends, I would be like three, and they would be like 15, and they would all be like, oh my God, he's so cute. And I'm just like, I guess I do really well with women. Like, I was <laughs> little, and I was really thinking, like, this seems like it's going somewhere. This is great. <laughs> but I didn't even know what it was yet. Right. But all those girls. Yeah. If I see girls form a line when they're dancing, forget about it. <laughs> That's the sexiest thing in the world to me. A soul train dance where girls form a line. Uh, Vito, do you have a weird kink for yourself? Italian food? What is it? You got to have lasagna on your lap? <laughs> I have done stuff with food before. That was pretty fun. Really? Yeah. I, I used a lollipop one time. and I put A, a Spice lo Girls lollipop? No, just a, just a regular like uh, Tootsie Pop. Wait, yeah. you put it in I her? put it in her. Yes. And then I ate the lollipop <laughs> out of her vagina. <laughs> This was just the reason I'm more candy, you bastard. I like held it there and then I ate it out of her vagina. And then when we went to fuck after the lollipop situation, like it felt like it felt like Sticky. as I put my, yeah, like it felt like as I put my dick in, it was like it felt like that like because snack. it was just so it hurt so much because the inside of the vagina got so sticky. So you were just worried about your pain, not the fact. That her vagina. Oh my god! It seemed yeah, like it wasn't get, as painful. Yeah. They tell you not to do that in the magazines. <laughs> yeah, stick, we did it. Stick food in your puss. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> he really shouldn't. He also rolled up a cannoli and stuck it in there. <laughs> <laughs> Is any kind of Italian cuisine? <laughs> he, hey, help yourself. It's good. He there rolled is, out a cannoli and then just put a dick in it. <laughs> There is a scene in the movie Jawbreaker that's really hot with Rose yeah. McGowan and a uh, popsicle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I remember liking that as a kid. Jawbreaker. Yeah. I don't think I've seen it. Oh, it's yeah, fucking great, it's dude. It's a really good yeah. movie. It's so great. Yeah, Rose McGowan, Judy Greer, Rebecca Gayhart, Marilyn Manson makes a little appearance. Oh. Uh, Carol Kane's in it, and Pam Greer. Wow, yeah. these it's are all my really favorites. Good. Yeah, yeah, it's really good, and it's dark and twisted, and like, uh, yeah, murder and teens with fun outfits. By the way, did you ever see the Rose yet? Remember, you promised me that you'd see the no, rose. No, I don't even remember. <laughs> yes, it's a Bat Midler. You say you love oh, Bat Midler. Cool. Then yeah, you yeah. never saw the rose. No, I will for sure. Someone sent but I text. recently rewatched uh, Drowning Mona and yeah. what is it? Horrible People. Oh yeah, and that was really fun. <laughs> I've yeah, I've been rewatching because I saw Hello Dolly again. I don't know oh, if I've seen you. Uh, on, on stage. Well, yeah, because my gal pal from yeah. London when she was here in September for a week, she's obsessed mm -hmm. with. Uh, Bette Midler, so, so check she's, her to Hello Dolly. She's British? She's from Canada, actually. She's oh. Toronto, but her dad's British, and she's been living there for like Does she have years. an accent? Yeah, like, I love the way Canadians say pasta. Uh, so yeah. she's that, but it's not, like, specific. Like, she'll say certain words. Like, uh, she sounds unique, but I don't think it's, what, like, Canadian. What does she say pasta? 
Pasta? Yeah, I love it. Pasta. <laughs> yeah, I love it so much. Because I live with a Canadian, and my best friend's Canadian, too, and I just yeah. love the way they say it. It's my favorite. I really like everything about Canadians anyway. Yeah, you know what I mean? They're just they're so solid. easy to get along with. I was just in Toronto for like a week um, uh-huh. doing the JFL 42 Fest, and the great crowd. I just had the best time there. Good food. It's oh, chill. yeah. Our, uh, our old intern saw her there and said, oh, yeah. you oh. killed it. Yeah. Oh, fun. He said that... Um, you had people um, rolling down the aisles. He said people oh, were cool. going crazy. I had such a good time there. And then I also got to open for cool people. So I opened yeah. for Tom Segura. Love Tom. And Kyle Kinane and stuff. It was nice. a good time. Colin Quinn was there. Alternative show. Fun stuff. Was he doing an alternative show? Um, yeah, was... Andy Kindler's alternative show. Was fun. Oh, great. I just like, I got to get picked up with Colin Quinn. And I just always enjoy my time forcing him to talk to me. He's so, <laughs> yeah, he's so cool. He's so funny at everything. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take whatever. Yeah. I like interacting what with him. What if we could get Colin and Sandra Bernhardt together? We'd be the happy oh, people my God. that ever lived. Those are like prom king and queen of cool New York. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I would agree. Yes. They're the coolest. Um, yeah, why don't we this. plug away, which was every one of you guys is I plug. have it. Okay. Lisa Traeger is hosting the Sex in the City Trivia Night this Sunday, November 12th at 7.30 at Littlefield in New York City. Uh, guest comedians, prizes, viewings of the episode. It's all benefit for Puerto Rico. LittlefieldNYC.com for tickets. Yeah, we'll have comics. Uh, there's like a comic team. And while I'm grading everyone's, we'll play an episode, and then the comics will make fun of. Oh, so you actually have to do grading, like you were? No, I'm writing the questions and making the powerpoints. Yeah. I'm gonna grade it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work. But... <laughs> I'm gonna send some girlfriends your way because I know a lot of girls who are obsessed with that show and would love I'm that excited. night. Yeah, and um, I have a friend who works at HBO. So she got me all this old Sex in the City swag. Oh, from the archives, collectible so, stuff. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's cool. It's like a fleece, nice sweater, sweatshirt, and like old school things. Now, Underwear. have you ever seen the tour? I've been down in the village when the tour is going by. I've seen people go by in the tour, yeah. and then I like, don't they give them cocktails too? Like they're yeah, like they on the tour do. bus with like. It's just such a different New York. I also can't yeah. like that's just so not my life. They're just at book. They also make things seem cool that aren't. Like Carrie goes to a jazz club. I'm like, I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they do a lot of rooftop bars, but maybe that's just like a couple episodes I've seen. But I just feel like they're like always like in the, like a bar situation that I've never been in. <laughs> well, they- yeah, or the freeness that they're all just picking up. Matt, maybe p- people do live like that, but it's so shocking yeah. to just, just to- hey you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that so like I've I've seen like only a couple episodes and of those like for whatever strange reason three times I've seen the one where the shy girl gets a new dildo. Like she oh, has yeah, a vibrator, the, the, bun- yeah. the bunny, yeah. and, and like to like it. every I'm like yeah I'll check the show out. I'm like this one again. I know there's like a million episodes, but I always watch it. That happens for sure. <laughs> they uh they're the ones I think that made Magnolia Bakery. Oh, like, right. A like big they, deal. And now you're, just, you're like, okay, it's a cupcake. Oh, maybe now a... I'm going to go get banana pudding. <laughs> <laughs> now that you said it. We're so close banana to pudding it. is the best thing in the world. Yeah, they do actually enough. have a really solid banana pudding. There's I no like such, that. There's no such thing as bad banana pudding. I'm a big fan. Yeah. Um, there is when it's too natural. Oh, like, that's okay. when it's not good. When it's like not Just yellow, mushed, I want it yeah. fake yellow color. <laughs> I've never had anything but the extreme fake. Uh, yeah, I've ordered it sometimes when it's not the fake. Like you're fake like, I don't want happy. baby food. Like I don't want just straight yeah. mashed bananas. No. No, but they, uh, it was always like a hip restaurant. Yeah. And yeah, they made a lot of things very popular. They're like, this is plantain pudding. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> plantain pudding. <laughs> no, I think about my wedding a lot. Like I just love weddings. I want to have a great wedding and i think about it con- like that's how i th- um, think about friends i'm like are you in the wedding invited not right. included <laughs> right. at all that's just how i think interesting and okay. i would l- i want to have a huge dessert table and i would love just like the magnolia banana puddings and like a nice stack for you know people like to grab up. yeah just everyone can grab whatever desserts but i'd love to have banana pudding <laughs> when, milk bar cake balls you know <laughs> when opie got married they had this fantastic wedding in philly and it was just really great and classy but then there was like a candy table right mm-hmm. where there was all kinds of candies you could have and people went ape shit and people were like filling up bags and i'm like this isn't that exp- you could go to the supermarket and do, but, but they were like, just like well they're wasted too yeah. yeah who did you tell me also had a mashed potato bar and oh, i was like and great. like you said 
whoever it was was saying like it was a hit, and you would think that it would. Uh, Chris uh, it was the guy whose job Chris took. Pitsy from Long Island. Pitsy okay. from Long Island, <laughs> and he's going like this. Were they in martini glasses? Yes. <laughs> and he's going yes. like this. We're gonna have a mashed potato. It's gonna be great. You get it in a martini glass. He goes, you can either put a spoon in it, just reach up and just start eating it. <laughs> and he talked about it. For, am I wrong, Chris? Months. Constantly. It's all he fucking talked about. He didn't think yeah. he was having a wedding. He was just going to a mashed potato party. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's hilarious. I'm like, I, I, I eat mashed potatoes most nights. This isn't that exciting to me. Yeah, but out of a martini glass? <laughs> this is different. Because <laughs> it's a bar full of the fixings. <laughs> the fixings. Oh, it's one of my worst words is to hear the term fixins. <laughs> it's very common in the South. Yeah. They're like, oh, all the fixins are out. I go, do you have a knife? I'll just stab myself in the neck rather than go along with the fixins. I don't know how to feel about fixins, but it's like interesting. It's an interesting word for sure. Yeah, she's adorable. I'm debating all the if I like it or hate it. You don't have to make up your mind now. No, Save it for the next time. I, I always say people have made my. I'm like you know I'm opinionated about so many things, but the death penalty is one I just don't have an opinion on. That's one and that's that how I feel about like, fixins. Oh, who oh my it? god! Ah! Is he supposed to be on the show? No. No, he said he was going to be here at 2.45 for something, but I didn't know for what. What are you up to? This is amazing. He actually, uh, I'll show you what he drew for me recently. Yeah, I want to see it. How are you? So good. Sorry to bother everyone. Hi, how are you? No, come sit for a second. Mateo, those are some athletic new shoes. I know. I'm going to, I'm doing Sean Donnelly's show. We're talking about TV, so, but I knew Lisa was here, so I wanted to come scream and say hi. Yeah, this is so exciting. I know. What were we just talking about? Mashed potatoes. Oh, the death penalty of mashed potatoes. Death penalty. That's what you uh, pick? She, yeah, she has no opinion. She <laughs> said she brought up. I'm like, I'm so opinionated about the death penalty. I can give or take. Like, I yeah. just don't. <laughs> I see both sides, so yeah, I get it. Oh, I thought you meant just like if someone was like, you, Lizzie, you're being put to death. What do you want to <laughs> yeah, pick? And I, you were like, I get mashed potatoes. I don't oh, care. No. At this point, it doesn't matter. Oh, I would get a whole plate of sa. So- I would get everything. Seafood. I would eat everything. Last meal? Yeah, I would eat everything. I'd have spaghetti a la carbonara. I no, I want like f- fried chicken, mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, so you a, go cheese for comfort. a lot of you carbs. Yeah. Food, well, yeah. that's the yeah. time to do it. Yeah, you know pizza what I mean? puff, a hot dog, a just... pizza <laughs> puff. I want pizza bagels and shrimp. <laughs> you can eat pizza anytime, even at your death. You know what? Be- most people bagels. want is just whatever their favorite thing that their mom made when they were a kid. You know what I mean? Like whatever they liked was that thing when they were like eight. They want to eat that. The scary thing is you don't know who's making it, so I would want to try to do like a brand name so I know what it tastes like. Do they get right to pick who makes it? Like, could you pick the rest? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because yeah, I don't I want like, like shit pasta. Well, or like if you want your mom to just show up with the food. That would be the best thing. I yeah. might be traumatic for her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, like, so oh, good. You like the gravy, the good gravy. You're and yelling then at her. Button press. I, think yeah. I would want breakfast like i would want all oh, breakfast that'd be items. nice like a brunch like, yeah, like uh, a nice yeah. skillet i think a skillet is the like more skillets need to be on menus why yeah, what the fuck yeah. yeah it has everything you'd want in breakfast and i don't get why a mic so mix yeah you can mix mic anything mix you want. would be great i don't know i'm not really into skillets i love I th- skillets for me the best last meal would be heroin you're just yeah. be so <laughs> relaxed. You're like, where are we care. going? And it does help you lose weight. So yes. you're doing two things in one. Yeah. Well, isn't the whole thing, I mean, this is going to get disgusting, but isn't but, the whole thing that you eat a lot, so then when they electrocute you, you shit a lot? That's it. You give them one last, like, <laughs> yeah. you shit I'll all day show day. you. Yeah. Give me a turkey. <laughs> yeah. Why they were electrocuting me, and I was shitting, and I'm like, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this. I mean, this has never this happened before. This is the worst moment of That's my life. That's a gay man's nightmare, is to be electrocuted, not looking good, over, like, full from food and oh, shit. I have a question. Yes. You know how, like, um, porn stars, like, you gotta get ready for anal? Oh, I know the whole thing. Yeah, no, I know you do with the enemas and stuff. Can you ever do a surprise <laughs> anal, or never? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes you take a risk and go. I mean, usually when you're doing it, like I think straight people imagine just just like sewers coming out of there. I mean, like every once in a while, like you'll be like, ah, let's go to the shower. But it, normally it's fine. Just depends on how you eat. Like if you're eating Indian food all the time, don't have a surprise <laughs> anal. So, but people are eating clean. So you're uh, assuming. Are you always eating clean, preparing? Sometimes I'm, I'm eating clean eat. doesn't necessarily. You know what I mean? Like. 
That could a lot of rough sometimes. Yeah, could be. there's actually okay. there's a supplement gaze take, which is not a fiber supplement, but it helps it all come out at the same time, so you don't even have to douche. My friend Patty does it, and he's just did this get real real? <laughs> no, <laughs> this is actually, no, but I can't oh, believe okay. you admit, yeah. told well, I everyone it's just Patty. Eating never clean eat. doesn't necessarily, you know what I mean? Like. That could a lot of rough sometimes, yeah. Could be. There's actually okay. there's a supplement gaze take, which is not a fiber supplement, but it helps it all come out at the same time, so you don't even have to douche. My friend Patty does it, and he's just did this get real, real? <laughs> no, <laughs> this is actually Patty. no, but I can't believe you okay. admit, yeah. told Why everyone it's Patty. Take it? Patty. I'd like to get everything out. I would like Vito to do this before he flies, anyway. <laughs> 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 he had to run out during this show today because you I, did I, you really? Yeah, yeah he emergency. does almost every show. He'll just go like this. I gotta go, and he runs out the door while we're doing a show. Oh, I, you know, I actually have to go. <laughs> I just realized I'm not to the bathroom, but I gotta go. Um, sorry to bust in. This I just wanted exciting. to come say hi. You're doing Sean's show right now. Yeah, and he wanted me here at two forty-five. So okay. that's a minute away. Well, we're gonna do is all go. bust into that show. Yeah, now. you guys should. Yay. We're just talking about TV. We talked about The Simpsons for like forty minutes last week. You know what's making a big comeback right now? I'm feeling online yeah. the nanny. I, Fran Drescher oh, is nanny. everywhere. People dress up for her like on yeah. Halloween. Yeah. The Instagram account, she's she's just in Broad City. I feel like Fran Drescher is by the way, gonna have Fran Drescher is so fucking hot. Yes. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. She married a gay man for years. Yeah. For fun or she knew or she no? Didn't, she didn't know. She just like married her what is he, his her agent or something like yeah, that? Yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she, I, <laughs> she just thought he was talented. <laughs> well, we have to we have to hang out, Lisa. We have a lot to catch up on. <laughs> you guys don't see each other as much. Now I've been in L.A. Was... for like over a month. And I yeah. have a pr- hard time leaving my house. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, it, uh, so it's hard. <laughs> baby steps to the door. Baby no, steps. this is huge. This was yeah. huge. You made really? a CeeLo today, so that's good. Yeah, I got some coffee. Yeah. You, did you recognize the cup? No, you told you texted me when I sent you the la- Sex in the oh, City Oh, my thing. God, yeah. <laughs> You're a Sex in the City person. Too. She's doing a show yeah. and you yes, need me to yeah. draw a poster you... for it. Oh, let's he see just, the poster. Well, I'll show. I, my phone's yeah. not on me, but Here, I'm going to try to sell the posters to make, raise more money. Nice. Um, and then Sex in the City. Or maybe raffle a framed one. I have to go see how much it is. Yeah. It's just weird when it's for charity because you don't want to spend a ton of money. Fair. Right. When it's. Oh, you my could God. Just that's donate. fucking great. It's the best thing. I gasped. Holy shit. I legit gasped when I saw oh. it. Oh, Talented. That's like um, yeah, this is what my friend part. said. Yeah, New I Yorker want... magazine, like from the fifties and sixties. Holy 60s. shit, dude! That's so... I know. I always ask him yeah, for it does things, look like that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he always exceeds my expectations a hundred and ten percent. You did midnight snack last night, right? Down at uh, are we ending? Yes. Yes. Singing. Yes. Yeah, we're done in what five minutes? Oh something like that. Yeah. Uh, how was that? The most I've... fun I've had ever. Yeah, they're great. We made up a Christmas song. What's All Midnight right. Snack? It's Josh Adam Meyer's band, but you get on stage and you just like, you have 15 minutes, but you just kind of make up songs on the spot. It was perfect. It was so and, fun. But but you're talented that way. Did most people suck when they try it? Um, I didn't watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Dulce went up and she was great. And then um, Sean Patton went on after me. So everyone was awesome. How was Sean? He's so crazy. He's really he fun. Yeah. <laughs> he has I no like uh, embarrass. Like he'll just go for it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, we were saying that, but you know he would like yes. Yes. commit and I to it. Almost feel commit. like I said that wrong. If you didn't hear the audience, you would never know whether he was dying or killing because he has the same. Thing the That's same, awesome. th- yeah, kind of like kids on a playground. You can't tell if they're being murdered or having the best time of their lives, <laughs> right? Just what? the sound of it. They're screaming all the time. You're like, are they being murdered or just going right. down a slide? <laughs> I've had that happen in my building where I just hear screaming, and I'm like, do I have to go down and protect a kid, or am I going to look like a nut? Yeah, stopping just like, people. They from just like the held play. a balloon and yeah. reacted the same way. No, I always say go for it. I'm always calling the cops. I don't care. I just <laughs> or I'm like I'm like watching. I just always I don't want to be the person that om- like saw a thing. I would to not go, do everyone. Something. I'm sorry. Bye, 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 Bye. 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 Um, or if I see like a couple fight, I'll just wait. Or if someone's passed yeah. out, I just don't. I don't know. Yeah. I uh, I think it would be like the most apparent like thing like if you got like the cops knocked on your door and you know, they're like there was a murder last night did you hear anything and you'd be like yeah I heard some screaming <laughs> and then I heard her scream don't hurt me but I didn't know you know I didn't want to get involved <laughs> yeah that would be really it, awkward it would be like oh the yeah worst. I heard stuff yeah I heard a lot oh, it's been going on a while couple gunshots <laughs> the worst was in Grand Rapids I was there for sure and 
I don't know. I saw these guys pull it, putting like a drunk pass out girl into a car. Yeah. But their vibe was so defensive. There was no way. Yeah. It was because they're like, she's our friend. I'm like, there's no way. And I ca- called the cops and they just never came. And I tried following the cars and like they never, ever came. They That's never horrible. listened to me. Yeah. It was weird. So in the back of your mind, you this. still don't know what happened. No, I think it's know. fucked. I was like, why wouldn't you guys come? I don't get yeah. it. I'm telling you someone's putting someone in a car. <laughs> it just seems the thing to do. It's yeah. not like a noisy neighbor. I don't yeah. know. It's like crazy. But I just am always, I don't know. I don't want I love how nothing you, on my watch. That you'll just say like this. I don't want to end on this. I, uh, I can't uh, <laughs> end on something so sad and scary. I know. I just can't believe how fast it is. I thought it would end at three. I just can't believe we're well, Chris, you, uh, so quick. I do you know, have, you're not even watching the show. You're not even where, paying where attention. Where are you right now? I'm right. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> he is, um, but in your head, where are you? I had a big moment okay? this weekend. What's that? I met Miley Cyrus. What? what? That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, I really like her. I'm obsessed. I think yeah. she's gonna be a cool, famous person for a really long time. I, you I think agree. she's gonna be above and beyond. Yeah. Her performances this week on SNL were insane. Yeah, and she sounds so good. The new album's good. She's a mu- she was raised as a musician, so yes. I just feel yeah. like she's gonna be changing. And everyone respect like she's gonna be doing duets and working with people. And she's just young and open minded. And, and you talk about that confidence voice. factor. Like she believes yeah. she belongs. Yeah. Period. She doesn't care if she's singing with Jagger. It doesn't matter who it is. Yeah. She's like, yeah, let's go out and do this. I saw her here. She was doing a show in the fishbowl here. Yeah. Wow. And she did Jolene. She did a cover of Jolene. Great. And I was like, fuck, man. I've seen like, her do that Really, too. really good. Like, yeah. Killer. She sounds great. And she's uh, excited to do it. And everyone likes her that I know that's met her too. Yeah. She was at CBS Sunday morning like a few weeks ago, like three or four weeks ago. And she was on her farm and they were there. She just has all these animals. But. And she's talking about performing like it was the easiest thing anyone could do. Talking about writing songs, like hit songs, like it was the easiest thing yeah. you could ever do. Well, that's why, like, um, I've been watching a lot of Top Chef and Project Runway, but mm. all the shows and then, like, it's or designers or stylists or anything. It's, like, cool to see how people's brains work and how it's so different. Like, you know, people be like, oh, how do you do comedy? And it's like, that's just how my brain sees everything. Yeah. And um, that's why it's easy for her. Like, I'm sure she just is constantly seeing. She didn't know any other way. She had her parents and they're like, it's time to write songs. It's time to sing songs and record them. And she's like, okay. Yeah. Because on Project Runner, they'll be like, take this inspiration and make an outfit. And And then they make the craziest, most beautiful stuff. And it's like, yeah, it's just people's you know, brains are so different. So I don't like, understand how anyone can make pants. Like I could get make a dress, weird. but how something comes together in its pants, <laughs> that's to me, it's beyond me. It's amazing. I think I, I, it would be easier to me to operate on a brain <laughs> than to make a workable pair of pants. <laughs> You know, I had I had shop class when I was younger and I was like, I'll make a breadboard. And they're like, dude, you got to move on past that. I was basically just taking <laughs> like a square. A yeah, I was just making it nice. I'm like, you could put bread on here, or cut bread. And they're like, why won't you try a lamp? I'm like, no, man, <laughs> just stay with that. Just staying with bread. I kind of toyed with a, a, a spice rack for a little while. But then I'm like, it's a thin breadboard. That's it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You put the bread right on there. This way you're cutting it. You're not cutting anything else. Breadboard. <laughs> did you do stagecraft in high school? Uh, I did a, a little bit of it, but I didn't Can I like do it. Noise? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> just inside your brain. That was something in your brain that popped. If you did, I didn't hear it through okay, the yeah. headphones. So, um, no, I didn't do it in depth. But uh, like, we kind of always learned a little of that stuff. But I knew people who were like doing that as their majors and stuff mm. too. Yeah. But they were very crafty. And then I I went to a performing arts, uh, a college that had um, conservatories, too. And then the people who majored in that were always walking around with um, hard hats, which I thought was just kind of funny. Like they were in school, but they were just like walking around but with hard it, hats. That, I mean, you could walk into some of those things and you can't believe how genius it is. Yeah. It's just genius. And I saw the Rocky play, which was dumb, but a ring came out off the stage into the crowd and then twirled around while guys were boxing on it. That's crazy. And I'm like, I'm only interested in how they made this thing and nothing else from this play. We do have to wrap this up. Yeah, I had fun. I'm glad we talked about Miley. (laughs) Do you know how much we love you and how I love so much. coming here so much? You are feel lucky that you guys like me. I am uh, uh, again. It's one of the most unbelievable sets I've ever seen her cool. jump out and go into some really different places than anybody else goes. And I, I just think the world of you. So let's uh, plug away. 
Lisa Traeger is hosting Sex in the City Trivia Night this Sunday, November 12th at 7.30 p.m. Littlefield uh, in New York City. There's going to be guest comedians, prizes. They're going to view episodes, and it's all for Puerto Rico. LittlefieldNYC.com for tickets, and follow her on Twitter on and Instagram at Glitter Cheese. Yes, she's coming back out on the road, so if she comes to your town, you got to go to that. Thank you so much. Thank That's you. That's it for us. Thanks to Bobby Kelly that was in. Yes, cool and Mateo Lane. Drive. Mateo, we had three Three, you know, these brilliant people dropping in. And uh, we'll see you all again in 1974. Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is over. We hope you all enjoyed yourselves. And we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening. Good evening.